years. Gliderol.com.au the state government is directing SA Health to urgently set up additional hospital capacity for COVID. Peter Malinowska says it comes after some concerning news he learned after being sworn in. I can reveal today that on Friday last week, a decision was taken to ban all non-urgent overnight elective surgery in our public hospitals. So things are so bad in our public hospital system that the elective surgeries that were put back on are being cancelled again. The new Premier has also announced a Cabinet subcommittee known as the Emergency Management Council will replace the COVID Ready Committee and there are plans to end the monthly rollover of the state's Emergency Management Act no later than June 30. New COVID modelling shows case numbers are expected to surge to 8,000 a day in April. Chief Public Health Officer Professor Nicola Spiria says there are several things driving that. We've had that lift in, in our restrictions and our behaviour as a whole society has changed. Also the third dose was not taken up quite as much as we had hoped and had initially modelled for. And then the last thing is we do have BA2, so this uh, pandemic's throwing us curveballs. It is clearly more transmissible. Four more deaths have been recorded in SA today and we've had 3,686 cases, a slight rise on yesterday. 165 people are in hospital, 11 in ICU. Labor argues the federal government failed to address cost of living pressures well before the Ukraine conflict. Soaring petrol prices are not only hurting motorists but also leading to higher grocery costs. The opposition claims it would address stagnant wages if it wins the May election. Labor's Treasury spokesman Jim Chalmers says the issue has been ignored for too long. The cost of living pressures on Australian families didn't begin with the Russian invasion of Ukraine. They began with the Liberals and Nationals attacks on take-home pay and that can't be forgotten as we deal with the cost of living legacy of this government. A man's been jailed over a terrifying road rage attack at Seaford last year. 40-year-old Ryan Simpson will spend at least three and a half years behind bars. He rammed a young woman's car because she was driving too slow before trying to mow down a witness filming the violence. Simpson blew three times the legal alcohol limit and has previous convictions for drink driving. It's not yet known why a plane basically fell out of the sky over southern China. The flight with 132 people on board came down in a remote area last night. China Eastern is grounding all its Boeing 737-800s to further notice. Neil Hansford from Strategic Aviation Solutions doesn't think the plane itself is to blame. It's possibly a pilot event or it's been an explosion or there's been a mid-air collision whether it's been brought down by a missile. I doubt that we will ever find the truth because it's China. But secondly, if we were to find it, I will think you, the aircraft will not be uh, the cause of this incident. Now turning to 5AA Sport. Don't miss out on your Hospital Research Foundation home lottery tickets. Hurry, tickets close midnight Thursday. Meg Lanning has made her 15th century as Australia beat South Africa at the Women's Cricket World Cup. The Aussie captain made an unbeaten 135 runs during the five-wicket win in Wellington. Meanwhile, our men's side is at five for 251 on day two of the third test against Pakistan. Adelaide United assistant coach Ross Aloisi is leaving the Reds. He'll depart the club for an overseas role with an Asian powerhouse. His last game will be against Melbourne Victory on April 2nd. And three footballers are challenging suspensions from the opening round of the AFL season. Rory Sloan, Willie Rioli and Mitch Robinson will front the tribunal tonight on various charges. Now checking 5 AA traffic. Salisbury South there. There's a smash on Main North Road at Kings Road. Gasworks this afternoon at Blakeview. Main North Road near Smith Road affecting both directions. Mile End you'll find restrictions for works on Henley Beach Road near South Road. That's also affecting both directions. And South Road pretty busy near Dawes Road too. Cameras, North South Motorway, Bolivar, Potts Road, Evanston Park. Enjoy zero cost FBOS from SmartPay. Make the switch today. No more terminal rental, no more merchant feeds. Visit smartpay.com.au. Minimum turnover and T's and C's apply. Adelaide's most accurate traffic on 5AA. 
Now the 5 to belay forecast. Get the Toyota Forklift Advantage. Visit toyotamaterialhandling.com.au Possible showers this afternoon, 25. Partly cloudy tomorrow, 23. Thursday much the same, 23. And Friday partly cloudy, a top of 24. Right now it's 20 degrees. Now let's hear what's happening on 9 News Tonight. Just as the end of the pandemic seemed in sight, South Australians have been told to brace for a COVID surge, as many as 8,000 cases a day, amid stunning claims by the new Premier of a health crisis kept secret from us all. I think South Australians are entitled to know where we're at. I'm Kate Collins. See the full story on Nine News tonight at 6. This is Rowie's Sports Show. Stephen Rowe and Sam Tugwell. Seven minutes after four, really big night in football tonight. We'll cover it all live as it happens. Rowie, welcome along. Thank you, Sam. Leith's a close contact, so it's you and I steering the ship, and mm -hmm. there's a bit of drizzle around. Mm. Didn't put the damn fertiliser out again. <laughs> Oops. See, Bix has just walked in. We got him on after five. He's got his rain gauge. He reckons there's a couple of mils, so I hope everyone did. Hey, and it is a big day at the AFL Tribunal tonight. R. Sloan up for eye gouging of all things. Look, we'll get to that. Alir Alir is out of hospital and Port's injury list is growing. We'll also get to that. And as I said, Bix joins us after five. So Crows fans, you can give him a call. How did you see their loss, their mm. one-point loss? What were your positives? What were your negatives? It's your turn after five. So line yourself up. We can call you back. $50 um, Barrow Hotel Group voucher Correct. for the, the best caller. So we're going to do that at five. It's your turn. Now, it's round one already. And how's this? Rory Sloan, Willie Rioli and Mitch Robinson will challenge their one-match suspensions by the MRO. For me, it tells me a couple of things. There has to be a disconnect between the rules or the MRO's rulings and the clubs. Um, I think a lot of these were deemed to be footy collisions, a la accidents. So is it the action? Is it the outcome? Is it both when it comes to the head? But three players with three head highs having three appeals with it. I'll start with the Willie Rioli one. Um, a bit amazed because he did <laughs> intend to jump. He did hit his opponent in the head, Rao. Luckily, Rao has a really tough head and he bounced up and tough he scalp. played on so maybe that's the only way they could appeal he didn't get injured is it the outcome is it the mm. action will, will that one will be on show tonight the other one and the big one for me is the mitch robinson one he actually stopped he braced for contact Dersma went hard and low at the footy as courageously as he always did and he actually ran into Robinson. He drew the contact with Robinson. Other than Robinson jumping out of the way, and I'm going to talk about this one with Kevin Sheedy, what more could he do? Yeah. And AFL 360's Mark Robinson tended to agree. I need the AFL to tell me and the players and the fans, what is Mitch Robinson supposed to do? Mitch Robinson actually said, oh, he's in a vulnerable position here. So he stopped and braced. He showed a duty of care. We're asked to show a duty of care. He didn't follow through with it. He waited. That one's going to be a big one, as this one will be for Adelaide and Rory Sloan, their skipper. Um, I think they're going to argue intentional grading down to careless. Now, if you saw it, it was a skirmish. It was a tackle. There's arms and legs and ball bobbing free going everywhere. <laughs> Rory's reached around from the brow back through the forehead and his hair. He's dragged yep. his fingers. Yep. Now, look, did he hit his eyes? Did he intend to do it? There is no way Rory Sloan intended to eye gouge that opponent. And I'll give you just one reason. Rory Sloan's had two retina displacements. <laughs> he has. So if anyone knows how sensitive the eyes Correct. are, it's Rory. Now, you'll say, well, do you do that in the heat of the battle? Probably not. But I think Gary Lyon and Jason Dunstall on the couch agree with me as well. Well, the interesting there is Agus isn't holding his face at all. So we don't, do we don't see any contact. So where did the report come from? So it's either they've gone to him or the Fremantle Footy Club have made some sort of comment yeah. on it. So no injury, no report, no ramifications on the ground. There's a little bit of push and shove. Mm. Rory Sloan's a competitive beast. He's always going to compete and fight hard for it. If that Fremantle player has sucked it up to the club oh. and the club has outed Rory to the AFL... Well, Blake Akers, I'll name him. He is the player. We all know that. And Fremont, they are absolute, complete la la heads, and we oh. should call the wham. <laughs> so I'm sorry. Come on. No, I know there's no such thing as ramping because we've got a Labor government in now. Put that one in. Um, <laughs> well, they've got four years to fix it. Um, don't get political, Stephen. I'll no, have to answer the boss show. on that one. It's a sports show. Move <laughs> on. But I'm telling you, whatever happened to clubs protecting clubs? 
Players helping players, the unwritten rule, swings and roundabouts. It's just another erosion of footy culture. I need to find out if Fremantle did dob on the club and dob on Rory. Mm. Because the vision That's an is so... That's indictment on Rory Sloan's mm. integrity. This vision is so unclear. There's only very limited angles out there. And most people, if you've seen them, jeez, you're not convinced. Fremantle, honestly, if you lard, you're dead to me. <laughs> Harsh. What? Dead to me. Crow's injury update. Only McPherson's <laughs> hammy is out of the Frio game. But on a positive light. How's this? Rory Laird could return. Ooh. So Rory's been running really well. Obviously one of the advantages of having a hand injury is you can still run. So um, he's pushing for selection this week. Um, he'll do most of training tomorrow. If he gets through that unscathed, then, then he'll be available this week. If not this week, then certainly back for, for round three. How's the lift music in the background? Yeah, I know. They do a very good job on the Crows music in the, uh, when you're on the phone back in the 1970s. Uh, that's the Crows injury list. So that is great news. Mm. If Sloan's out, Laird's in. But if Sloan can reverse the decision tonight at the tribunal, which is on at 4.30, and we will cross to Mitch Cleary from AFL House. We'll let you know about that. Well, Sloan and Laird will both be in. And on the Port Adelaide front, their injury report after round one, it's not good reading. No, is it? Trent no. McKenzie, this is great news. Hyper extended his knee. The minute he did that and the ambulance came out, I thought that is ACL. Yep. That is the classic ACL. Well, the great news, no structural damage. Um, and he's an outside chance to return. For me, unlikely. Honestly, if he can come back from that, A at the later. least it's bruised bones because the bones crunch against each other. But Trent, I'm wrapped for you, you big cannon. That is great news. Just to think if Cleary's out, McKenzie's out, and Aaliyah's out, they could suit up Sam Skinner. We'll get to that as well with Darcy Byrne-Jones later in the show. Xavier Dersma, again, no damage, no collarbone. He sprained an SC joint. Now, he's a bit sore. He might be a chance to play, which is good news, but yeah. I normally think with those AC joints and SC joints, if you've got compression injuries there, unless you can jab him, you're missing two or three weeks, mm. but let's hope he doesn't miss any. And I think Robbie Gray and Connor Rosie, well, they'll be touch and go, but I think if they both can get themselves right, they'll be in, which is fantastic. But the big one is Aaliyah Aaliyah. He's Absolutely. had ankle surgery. That's a minimum four weeks, more likely six. He's an All-Australian. Thanks to Channel 9, he's Aaliyah leaving hospital. Obviously not the way I wanted to start, um, but it is what it is. It's part of sport. Can you give us a, a, a time frame on your return? Uh, I'm not too sure at the moment. Uh, hopefully back within a month or who knows, but um, at the moment, just focus on my rehab, um, do what I need to do, try to get back out there as soon as possible. Yeah, good lad. That is a brutal round one game. They might have some lingering consequences consequences there. They got Hawthorne Saturday night. That's at home. Big crowd expected. It is Saturday night, and they're going to honour um, Russell Ebert. They are. So that'll be just superb. Support supporters. Get out there, get your tickets, three-game memberships, get on the website, make sure you load the joint. Looks like the weather's going to be absolutely Fantastic. perfect. And the third test is tightly poised. How's this after day one? Australia 5 for 232. After some first-class bowling by Pakistan, one of their dudes bowls 140 clicks and reverses it. Freddy? That's him. Amazing. He's not bad. He's got a good pill to uh, Travis Head, too. He did. Yeah, bloody well, Travis, don't get me later. started. No cigar on 26. <laughs> Uzi Kawaja again, he top scored. So I hope anything I was more likely to get out. Um, ball rolling underneath my bat than anything, which is weird on a day one wicket. So. And a reverse swung from, I think, the 12th to the 13th over the whole way through the, the day. So uh, made scoring quite difficult. <laughs> Has it he been? <laughs> Absolutely superb. Australia currently 5 for 268. Kerry not out 27. Green 37. I love both these blokes to get a score with that. And before we go to the break, yep. I just thought we'd pose a question to our, our listeners that we love. Mm -hmm. The Shane Warne Memorial is 7 p.m. next Wednesday. Yes. That is at the MCG. Uh, his service will run, well, they're saying approximately two hours. They're talking through Ticket Tech. They've already sold 50,000 tickets. Wow. Sorry, they're not sold. You've got to get tickets to yep. get in. It, it, it's free, but they reckon they could get, I don't know, north of 80,000. Incredible. Which would be absolutely massive. Yep. We were wondering, will Adelaide Oval be screening it in simulcast? Now, mm. they could either do it inside the stadium or in the Southern Concourse where they got the big screen. For mm -hmm. those that felt they wanted to get a bit more closer to the atmosphere and it would Adelaide Oval screen it. 
So we have rung them, and what's the answer, well, Sam? Well, so far they're investigating. So it doesn't sound like there's a definitive answer as of yet, like they actually have a plan in place, but there may be conversations going around. We've heard that some of the other states are doing it at their yeah. major venues. So Adelaide may follow. doing it. Optus Stadium's doing it. Why would we not do it? He loved this oval here. Absolutely great. So if they did simulcast the Shane Warne Memorial, is that something we should do, get behind, should we go, would you go? Have your say, eight double two three double O double O. And remember, it's 7 o'clock at night. It's not a day event it's a, or a morning event. It's an evening event. So it would be definitely something I think a lot of people after work would love to come and I reckon I'll go down. Specs. Absolutely. I think I'll done, go down. For sure. He, he is a once-in-a-generation cricketer. Mm -hmm. And we'll speak to um, Damien Fleming about him. Um, yeah, he... Guys like him are just still, I don't know, it's still surreal. It's, I still feel like it's surreal. He's so respected around this country that just about anyone in any city would go to that sort of evening. He is, it would be worth it, absolutely. For well, the well Channel Open. 7 tomorrow night has got a big documentary they on do. Shane Moore. I mean, Damien. that's how huge it is. It's massive. So Damien Fleming's going to join us yeah, later on that. in the show because yeah, right. he will tell us a bit more about that and more on who he was. Mark Bickley, of course, on the show tonight. Kevin Sheedy, Darcy Byrne-Jones from the Port Adelaide Footy Club. Barry Hall's going to join There's us. Uh... He's about to uh, enter the ring tomorrow night against Sonny Bill Williams. And, of course, what we love the most about this show, we have giveaways galore tonight. Loads to give away. Two Port Adelaide locker room Ooh. doubles on offer tonight. Two opportunities. Yes. One this hour, one next hour. So stay listening. Two Ooh. Adelaide 36's family passes to give away. And 450 bucks for the Royal Hotels. We are playing our mystery sports again tonight with Bix. So stay tuned. Have a crack at our mystery and, sports. And, and please, everyone, keep listening. Get the clues. Three of them are out. Mm -hmm. $450 for the Bro Hotel Group. Yep. Now, I'm not knocking the young man that rang last night, but he had no clue whatsoever. <laughs> he have a clue. So we've got to. <laughs> come on. Have it's a crack. 450 bucks. You can do it. 8223 is our number. You can give us a call throughout the show. Plenty to talk about the tribunal hearings. We are going to chat to Mitch Cleary from 7 News next because there's so much to get through. It's 18 minutes after four. Each week on the 5AA Breakfast Show, David and Will talk to star players from the Adelaide Crows. Thanks to Leader Computers, Australia's largest Australian-owned PC manufacturer, based right here in Adelaide. Don't just send it. If your current job is driving you bonkers, well, get outdoors and hit the road. Here's Chris from ASIC Couriers to tell you how. Thanks, Rowie. ASIC Couriers is growing, and we need more drivers to keep our promise of perfect service. So if you want a career that'll take you places, get in touch with us at ASIC Couriers. Visit asiccouriers.com.au. Don't just send it. ASIC. Hello, I'm Lynn Andrews. For over 50 years, the team at Lynn Andrews Real Estate have made it easy to manage residential and commercial property. Whether you own a single residential home or multiple commercial properties, our passion for property investment means we have a great deal of knowledge to share. How to invest safely and properly. Matching the right tenant with the right property every time. We're here to help. Visit lynnandrews.com. Is 2022 the year you start planning life after retirement? Feel confident in your newfound social and financial freedom when you move into a Caritas retirement village. With 11 locations across Adelaide, including Brooklyn Park, Marion and Glenelg, the lifestyle you have always dreamed of is just around the corner. Call Caritas Retirement Villages now on 1300 796 311 to book a village tour. Caritas Retirement Villages, building better communities. It's okay to want more, which is why more and more people choose Use Mawson Lakes Volkswagen to service their car, especially Volkswagen owners. At Mawson Lakes Volkswagen, we offer state-of-the-art servicing, complimentary loan cards, next-day servicing, and breakfast or lunch is on us. Why? Because when you're Adelaide's newest Volkswagen dealer, you want to give more. Mawson Lakes Volkswagen, just a short drive from the city. Visit mawsonlakesvw.com.au and book your service today. Water is life. Water can heal. At Adelaide Hydrotherapy, chronic pain appears to melt away. Our large, warm therapy pool is heated to 34 degrees for optimum relief. If you suffer from chronic pain, the experienced physios and exercise physiologists can develop a tailored plan to start your healing. Ask us about working with your GP or NDIS plan. 
go to adelaidehydrotherapy.com.au and start feeling better today. I've been driving for most of my life and I've always been a safe driver. But as I've grown older, driving has become more challenging. Intersections feel busier. Driving in peak hour traffic and travelling longer distances is stressful. And driving at night or in bad weather is risky. Even small mistakes can be costly. Look for the signs. If driving is getting harder, there are alternatives. Make a plan to stop driving on your terms. Don't stop driving by accident. Think Road Safety, a message from the Government of South Australia. Scraped your caravan? Don't worry. Call Walker Crash Repairs, your RAA approved caravan crash repairer. This is Rowie's Sport Show. 21 minutes after four, very shortly we're going to cross to Melbourne to see what's happening in the AFL Tribunal, kicking off in about mm. nine minutes' time. Yeah, um, with Mitch Cleary, a sip and save text. Hey, Ro, this all started when Brett Burton dobbed on Brett Montgomery way back in about 2004. So, Ro, a red leg gone in your bad books, regards Wayne Pitaway. Good point. Yeah, good point. I forgot that. Thank you, Wayne. I love being corrected. Hey, the Australian women's cricket team, this is a Fleury Milk Sports update. They've won six straight World Cup matches in New Zealand. They beat yeah. South Africa, the Savo, by five wickets. They had about 28 balls remaining. Meg Lanning, remember that name? We all know it. We know it. Captain. What an absolute start. Not out 135 off for 130 cods. Unbelievable. Nice little full toss, but she'll pull away for four. And Meg Lanning brings up her 15th One Day International 100. Her 10th while Australia are chasing. And she has made this look just so easy. Unbelievable. They've got one game left first. Bangladesh, then the semi-finals. The final is April the 3rd. We've won the World Cup six times. That's so good, these But girls. we are due. The last one we won was in 2013. So yep. come on, girls. They can do it. No doubt about it. All right, let's quickly check your traffic. Build now with Fairmont and save thousands with luxury free kitchens and bathroom upgrades. T's and C's apply. So is Re South, a smash there. Main North Road at Kings Road. Blakeview Gas Works, Main North Road near Smith Road. That's affecting both directions. Speeds at 40. Darlington works on the Flagstaff Road upgrade. Continue near the South Road intersection and busy on the drive home South Road near Dawes Road. Cameras, Main North Road. Road, Evanston South, North South Motorway, Bolivar, Whites Road, Paralawi. Jack's Tyres and Auto are now open to Gillis Plains in Edwardstown. Call Jack's today to make a booking. Jack's Tyres and Auto. Peace of mind driving. Search Jack's. Adelaide's most accurate traffic on 5AA. Yeah, busy night for the AFL Tribunal. Three cases being challenged at AFL House. Joining us is Channel 7 Melbourne's Mitch Cleary. Mitch, thanks for your time and Rory Sloan's up first. He's just probably getting his uh, paperwork in, uh, in order, Rory. He's up in about... Uh Seven or eight minutes first up. It's going to be a fascinating case. It's the, the eye contact, we don't see it all too often. The, the Lockie Neal and uh, Toby Green one from a, from a few years ago, I guess, is the, the most noble one. Um, I reckon line ball on this one for Rory Sloan. He's been deemed intentional. Can he get that downgraded to careless and, and get away with a fine? That'll be, uh, I guess, the, the big discussion point for the tribunal um, in a little over 10 minutes. Yeah, um, I think he's a chance. Uh, the, the footage isn't conclusive, and... There's no way anyone could say that that was intentional. When when this is a bloke, and I know he'll be saying this in his defence, who had a displaced retina last mm. year, Mitch. He stole the words right out of my mouth. And I, and I heard him speak a few weeks ago saying he was considering going down the Mason Cox eye goggles situation. So it is pretty serious for, for Rory Sloan, as, as you full, uh, well know, Rory. So I'm with you. And he doesn't have his eyes. He can't see what he's doing. He's going for the footy. It, it all gets a bit caught up. There is a reverse angle um, that I have seen mm. uh, that that shows him he make eye contact with, with Blake Akers. But in terms of the intentional uh, versus careless aspect, I think that's one he may be able to pursue. And, um, yeah, I don't think Rory Sloan goes out in the field to, to eye gouge a player. Yeah. And uh, I think that's why you can see the Crows, um, you know, I, I don't think they're, they're going to be pushing for finals or anything like that, but they, it's how important it is to get their captain out there on the park. And um, I can see why they're, they're rolling the dice for $10,000 to try and get him off mm. it. Did Freo dob him in? I don't know that. Is that the suggestion? I, I, well, it is, Mitch, and I'd like you to chase that up, please, and then send me a text. Okay, I'll, I will do. Um, I think Blake Aker's reaction, having watched it a few times this afternoon, probably would have been enough for Michael Christian and his team to, to be aware okay. of it, but I'd be disappointed if Rio, well, maybe that disappointment might be strong. Yeah, I guess. Suki la la. Uh, given, you know, mm. given, given Rory Sloan's character. I, Correct. I, I think uh, we, we all know that, so yeah. um, that would be a bit of a stretch. I think Blake Aker's reaction and the way he flings his head back might have been sort of okay. enough to, to give it off. 
Okay. Uh, Willie Rioli, the only saving grace is Rao got up, he's got a thick head, and he played on no injury. But what are they thinking? That was absolutely intentional. Yeah, he got left the ground, and that's a big one. Um, with the AFL tribunal take into account. Some would argue, and I'm probably in the, the camp, that he's probably lucky to get away with one week, especially when, and I know we'll get to the Mitch Robinson one in a moment, but the AFL was arguing, well, Mitch Robinson should have made the decision not to bump in the, in the sort of few steps leading into that contact. Well, Willie Rioli's in the same, and, and the potential to cause injury on that mm. one that the AFL continued to, to hammer on about. It was even, I guess, further um, enhanced this year in the, in the guidelines. That, that potential to cause injury is such a strong factor that the AFL only found it to be medium contact in, in one week, given the, 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 the sort of the sense that he left Matt Rowell in. Um, and the, the sort of the, the fact that Matt Rowell couldn't really defend himself, um, he, I guess you could find himself a little bit lucky. But yes. maybe to me it speaks to I don't know where you sit on it, but maybe it speaks to how threadbare West Coast are at the moment that they're just going to roll the dice, knowing that mm. they've got the cash, they're pretty uh, well off field, and they're just happy to, uh, to to see if they can get him out there, given how, how few how many injuries they've got. Mm. Is it action or outcome? Again, that one's going to be a big one. Mitch Robinson's the one for me. What more could have the lad did other than jump out of the way? No, that's the thing, and um, he would argue, and I'm sure people at Brisbane would say the same, that does he want to be putting his head over the footy like he did, or if he jumps out of the way, is he looking at getting dropped or facing you know ramifications from his coach for, for shirking the contest? So it is a, a fine line, and oh, I think there should be some um, aspect in footy still left for a, a little bit of... Uh, accidental contact, and I think that's what Mitch Robinson did. You could argue by the, the, the real letter of the law that he, he could have slowed himself or um, braced himself further, maybe at two or three steps out, but he's a ball player, Mitch Robinson. I don't think he, he would do anything differently if he had that contest a hundred times again. So that, oh, you could argue all of them, Rowie, are going to be oh, no. pretty, uh, pretty interesting for tonight and then sort of set the precedent for the season, especially the Rioli on Rao, plus the, the Robinson on, on, on Dersma. So good to hear that Dersma isn't in too bad of a way and he, can, mm. he should be able to get up but um, yeah I, I think these tonight uh, a lot of clubs not just the, the ones involved that the clubs all around the competition are going to be waiting by the phone and, and waiting to see the outcome and to how the, the tribunal does interpret them mm. for, the, for the entirety of the season. Does it show a disconnect between the rules or the MRO or the AFL and the clubs? The fact that they're all challenging? Well they're all challenging round one three yeah. challenges three different challenges and they're all challenging. Yeah, it's a, good, it's a good question. I think clubs still like to think that the tribunal is a little bit disconnected from the match review. So we saw last year quite a few were overturned. Um, that they, they think they can go to the tribunal, try their luck, and that the, the tribunal members may see it in a different light to, to Michael Christian and his match review team. So that's maybe where I'd see it. I think the ten thousand um, dollars maybe I don't know maybe it could be increased to, to see if it, to, to sort of waver on that disconnect. But, okay. Yeah, I think uh, we'll learn a lot tonight. Mitch, thanks for your time. Two jobs. Go and give a character reference for Rory because your <laughs> word is great. And the other one is if Frio dobbed him in, I need to know about it. <laughs> we'll let you know, Rory. I'll just give you a text. Yeah, you big la-la heads. <laughs> Mitch Cleary, 7 News, Melbourne. He's an absolute ripper. He's fantastic what he does. Thank you to Mitch. He spends great work uh, doing it over there in Melbourne and it's going to be a very big evening. So stay tuned to us, 5AA, all the way through to 6 o'clock. We'll give you the updates as it's happening. Rory Sloan about to enter the tribunal. OK, let's take a quick break. Headline shortly, but before we do, the Adelaide 36ers, we know they're taking on the South East Melbourne Phoenix on Sunday, March 27th in centre. As we know, tip-off 12.30 afternoon. We have two family passes up for grabs, Rowie. So if you want a piece of that, 8223-0055 is the number. And, of course, remember, every game this year, you could shoot to win a 1000 bucks thanks to My Money House and have a shot at 100 hundred. Or $100,000 in the last money. game of the season. I know, try and spit it out too. Register now at mymoneyhouse.com.au forward slash 36ers. We're going to chat to Damien Fleming next. 5AA Breakfast. I tell you, where I am, there's David Pasoni posters everywhere still. Is there? I think the losers are always finding it a little bit harder to muster the volunteers to go out and take them down. Well, say the Greens, right? What's the psychology of you getting out of bed on Sunday morning and taking the posters down? Yeah. Informing Adelaide. Well, how is it that you're a Green, yet you You'll knowingly engage in the worst form of visual pollution related to elections and just leave your damn posters up. 6am weekdays on 5AA.
G'day, it's Jared for Wayville Mitsubishi. The Wayville showroom on Goodwood Road is going through a rebuild, so right now you'll need to enter via Goodwood Road for sales and via Davenport Lane for service. So it's business as usual at Wayville Mitsubishi, driven by Australian Motors. Fire, fire, go away. Come again, no one's a dead. Act now to be bushfire ready. Remember to do your five-minute bushfire plan. Keep it up to date and share it with loved ones today. It's also important to stay informed. Watch the weather and listen to multiple sources of information. Why risk it? Go to cfs.sa.gov.au. A message from the Government of South Australia. 4.31, Flemo next. Hey, get back to the office by getting out of the office and into the kitchen with Sprout. A Sprout cooking class for your office is an excellent team builder. It's fun, non-intimidating, conveniently located, and the best part, you get to enjoy a delicious meal and learn a few handy cooking tips along the way. I've done this. You can't stuff it up because they help. They're looking over your shoulder. It is superb, <laughs> Sprout. Sprout's facility, look, it's huge, and you only have a cook in groups of two or three, making it COVID safe. Their autumn cooking classes are now open. Whether you put the master and master chef or are simply looking for some midweek meal inspirations, Sprout has you covered. What are you waiting for? Go to sprout.edu.au and sign up today. This is Adelaide's 5AA. Good afternoon, I'm Michaela Kamarek. New Premier Peter Melanowskis has held a comprehensive media conference on the handling of COVID going forward, but there's no lifting of the mask mandate yet. Rescuers haven't found any survivors among the 132 people on board the China Eastern flight, which nosedived into a mountain. The US President believes there are clear signs Vladimir Putin is about to use chemical and biological weapons in Ukraine. And Adelaide United assistant coach Ross Aloisi is leaving the club for a coaching job overseas. Now checking 5 AA traffic. At Prospect, there's a smash on Main North Road at Edgeworth Street. Brooklyn Park reports of a breakdown Henley Beach Road near Holbrooks Road and Blakeview Gasworks there. Main North Road near Smith Road affecting both directions speeds at 40. Busy on the drive home, Tapu's Hill Road to Donald Bradford Drive to West Beach Road with cameras Hillier Road, Hillier, Cavern Road, Dry Creek. Invoicing but instantly receipts but organised. Business is better with online accounting from Zero. Try free for 30 days. Search Zero. that's X-E-R-O. Adelaide's most accurate traffic on 5AA. Cloudy tonight, a low of 15. Partly cloudy tomorrow, 22. Right now it's 21. More news at 5 o'clock in As It Happens on 5AA. This is a message to all local businesses. On behalf of all radio listeners. Let's hear from you. Yeah, we want to know when your shoes are on sale. If you can help me remortgage. Or landscape my yard. There's more of us listening to radio than ever before. In our cars, on our phones, laptops, smart speakers. In fact, 95% of all Australians. That's a lot of potential new customers. So come on. We're all ears. Advertise on radio and watch your business grow. For help with radio advertising, visit radioalive.com.au. If you want to get up to speed on all the latest sports news fast, then check out the Sports Update, a daily podcast that gets you across what's happening on the court, the field or the pitch in under five minutes. No need to find time to read the back page when you can listen wherever and whenever is convenient for you. Be the person in the know with the Sports Update. That's Search for the Sports Update in the 5AA Player app or wherever you listen to podcasts. Scrape to caravan? Your insurance should cover that. Speak to Walker Crash Repairs and let them fix it. This is Rowie's Sports Show. 26 minutes to five. Very soon, Mark Bickley's going to join us. Kevin Sheedy, Darcy Byrne-Jones from The Power and Barry Hall are on the program tonight. And plenty of time for your calls. Of course, we've got Port Adelaide Locker Room tickets to give away. Doubles galore. One this hour, one next hour. Ooh, so yes. still something to go off before we get to five o'clock for you four o'clock listeners. Uh, also, just as we begin the Rory Sloan uh, tribunal hearing, the updates are coming through, obviously just beginning now. He's claiming the contact was careless rather than intentional. His QC, Tom Duggan, is representing Rory Sloan tonight. He's not 
uh, going up against uh, those low impact and high contact charges. He doesn't. He's not going to consider them. It's just the intentional conduct. Well, that'll be an easy one. I would have thought. Fluoro Milk Sport update: five for two eighty one Australia. Kerry thirty two not out. Green forty five not out. There was just a challenge. There was a mm. cod that went between bat pad, so <laughs> it missed his bat. But the ball grazed the outside off stump of um, Kerry, then went through to the keeper. Uh, the Pakistanis appealed it. How lucky is he? It actually grazed the stump. It's one of those crazy ones where you think it's a smash the stump on the side. There's no way that that mm. bail can stay on, and yet it has. So yeah, a lot of luck for Alex Kerry. Seven save text. If Byron Pickett was Willie Rioli to be six weeks, Jeff at Port Nalunga. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Hey, Channel 7 will be screening a special event. It's titled simply War. It's a new doco celebrating. Well, his incredible life. Joining us is a former teammate, a proud Victorian. I speak of Damien Fleming. Flemo, welcome. Hey, boys. How you going? Yeah, it's still surreal, isn't it? Yep, yep. Certainly so. Um, still um, just can't believe it. Um, you know, yeah, Warney was, uh, you know, so much to so many people, you know. And in my case, you know, a teammate's, you know, met him, you know, what, over 30 years ago and played some underage cricket and then um, lucky enough to play for Victoria and Australia. And um, and also, you know, you've got the Warren genius on the field, but then you've got the, the, the rock star off the field where I think everyone in Australia and millions around the world felt like they knew him because he gave so much. Look, he did. I, I, I can't believe the adulation, the world interest, the TV specials. There's another doco. He's probably going to get 80,000 plus at the MCG. We might um, do it here at, at Adelaide Oval. People are so touched by the man. But, but now I actually do. He, he really was a larger-than-life Aussie sporting legend on and off the pitch. It, there's not many like him, Flemo. No, nah, he's a one-off. You know, everything you're saying, you know, you know, for me straight away, you know, first met him at a, a surprise, surprise, at a nightclub called Transformers. <laughs> oh, um, around, around, he was drinking Maduri and lemonade. And yeah. He might have been still playing for St Kilda because, you know, his love was AFL. And, mm. and um, you, you see the cricketers, boys, we, we kick the AFL footy a lot. Um, I mean, you talk about Alex Carey there, you know, he was on the Giants list. And Warney had unbelievable skills. He was a great kick, um, great mark, um, great hands. But as he said himself, he was just a bit too slow to make yeah. it at the next level. But And then, you know, so Warney just was a very skillful uh, sports person. So even with the cricket, um, we, we know he wasn't the, the fittest, um, you know, cricketer going around. But, geez, he worked hard in the nets, you know, a bit like Darren, you know, South Australia's own Darren Lehman. Yes. They were very skillful and they worked very hard um, in the nets. Um, but going back to Warney, you know, he, he got on a youth tour, um, you know, back in about 1990 after St Kilda had moved him on. So he, he moved into cricket and we, we didn't really know him because, you know, we had guys like Michael Bevan, Damien Martin, Darren Berry, Jamie Cox, Shane George from South Australia. Wow. So we're all state players. Mm. Um, but he was straight away the, the most extroverted, loudest, um, you know, had the Billy Idol hair, his ripping leg spinners, talking about flippers. We didn't know what he was talking about. And <laughs> just to see the progression from that kid there to mm. three years later, total, total dominance in the world. Um, you know, for me, reflecting back, I, I you know, in those short three years where he went from, you know, an AFL, you know, try hard to a degree to the, one of the greatest bowlers we've ever seen is a credit to his skill, but also mm. his inner toughness. His yeah. inner toughness, he's very competitive. Yeah, I love the scallywag in him. Um, whatever his failings were, we just forgave him, and that's rare in Australia, Flemo, and he was certainly like that. Tell us about the doco. Yeah, well, really, um, I don't know as much about it besides being interviewed myself. So, you know, I'm not sure of all the total guests that we've got. But, uh, you know, um, obviously the cricketing fraternity will, is in there to talk about their different um, perspectives of Warney. And we and we all have different, um, you know, stories about him. So I think, mm. 
it'll be essential viewing just because, you know, you, you, you've got rock stars, you've got actors, you've got cricketers, you've got footballers, you've got media personalities. Um, you know, he, he moved in that world. A lot of us don't, um, even, even in high-level sport. You know, he was in a famous team, cricketing team, a famous Australian cricket team. He was the most famous player that I played with by a mile. Yeah. And back to what you said at the start, Roe, you know, like um, always uh, gave um, an insight into himself. Like a lot of sports people are private so the public doesn't get to see them. But as you said, warts and all, we got to see Warney. Um, you know, when social media hits, who's the who's the player that, that, that gets on there and is posting every day? It's, it's Warney. When the Big Bash is starting to emerge, uh, he comes back, um, dominates, commentates while he's playing, doing a mm. better job than us up in the box. <laughs> um so he appeals to a new generation. I, I mean, I think for someone like Warney, um, you know, that, that, that's yeah. how big he was, that he, he constantly um, got himself outside the cricketing fraternity and, and, and appealed to, um, you know, everyone. And, and even just every time you go to England for an Ashes series, you forget Warney's 10 times as famous over there. Wow. Like, he's a mm. rock star, superstar. So... It's not just in his home country, um, mm. and we haven't even touched on, you know, in India, he, he captain coached the first IPL win for the Rajasthan Royals. So his legacy, um, you know, off-field, um, we may know, we might not ever see again. I don't think we'll see a player like him again. Um, but then off-field, um, you know, the, the people that he mentored, um, to his lovely family, to his teammates that loved him, you know, he's... Um, you know, going to be sorely missed, but obviously never, ever forgotten. Mm. <clears throat> His life and family creed was manners are free. Well, he certainly did live that. Damien Fleming, our guest, we're talking about the uh, Shame Worn documentary. It's going to premiere on Channel 7 tomorrow night. Now, I hope one of your stories, Flemo, is your test debut, which he played in against Pakistan in 1994. You got a hat trick. Not long after that, you were going to get a second hat trick, but warning and second slip. Did he drop it? He, You could have had two. Hat tricks, but Warney dropped it. And thank God he did, boys, because it's the first que one of the first questions I get at corporate speaking. So, um, you know, if, if another teammate had taken it, they probably wouldn't remember. But because the most famous player we had dropped the catch <laughs> at, the, at, at the lovely Adelaide Oval, it was beautiful. We can't blame the scene conditions. No. Adelaide Oval is the best place to field in. Um, he said he felt like he did well to get to it um, <laughs> but I said mate it was going straight for your head it was a dolly um, it uh, was a dolly um, but even then isn't it like if he messed up he messed up big so we remember a drop catch you know like that but I, I like to remember you mm. know on the, on the day that he passed I watched um, 50 of his greatest deliveries you know with my son and it was oh. just I think sometimes because of his great personality and how big he was off the field, you know, I, I still like reflecting on how good he was. Like, you watch those deliveries, and, off, and a lot of those games I was playing in, you just think, how did he do that? Um, and then World Cup semi-finals, uh, back to the Adelaide Oval, 2006-07, that England team rocked up on day five, and they were just going to play out a draw. But there was one bloke who felt like he could will himself into the contest and win it, and that was Warning. Despite getting, I think it was one or none for 150 in the first innings. Goodness. He rocked up, strong body language, will knock him over, and, and, and he somehow manipulated one of the greatest test victories of all time. I was there that day. What will you miss the most about the great man, Flemo? Gee, that's a hard question, isn't it? I, 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 it's going to be hard over the summer to think about uh, the void that he, that he leaves. Mm. Um, so I think what you miss is that you won't, you know, you don't catch up again. That's it. It's so sudden. Mm -hmm. um, but going back again, um, you know, so many memories um, and, and luckily play in a generation where on field the coverage has been like it never has before. But then even off field, as I said, he was prolific on social media as well. So he's left, um, 
you know, a lot of his, his personality for people to see for, for yeah. generations to come. So one of a kind, as you said, larger than life, um, but, a, you know, a great teammate um, and, and, and just purely one of the greatest players, you know, the greatest at least, I know it's hard to get to Sir Donald Bradman, but the, the greatest Victorian um, cricketer that's ever, that we've ever seen. Beautiful words, Fleming. Thanks for sharing. Thanks, guys. Well done. Damien Fleming there, the biologist. Uh, Shane Warne documentary is going to premiere on Channel 7 tomorrow night. It's amazing. We've got so many great people on there. Glenn McGrath, Justin Langer, Matthew Hayden, some great mates, Merv Hughes, Victorian, of course. Uh, Magda Sabansky, a comedian, TV personality we all know and love. Danny Minogue. Uh, a bunch of other people from a whole bunch of different walks of life. Um, I mean, bank CEOs, people that just cross paths with Shane Warne. It'll be an amazing discovery and interesting mm. story tomorrow night. Yeah, so transcendent sport. No question. Absolutely. So just some quick update from Rory Sloan's tribunal. Thanks to Flurio Milk. Rory Sloan at the moment is speaking. He's got James Podziadley providing as a character reference at the moment. But uh, he does say, when I first, this is Rory Sloan, when I first heard about this charge last night, I was genuinely shocked. Looking back at the footage, I can clearly see this was a careless incident and one I will accept. And is going through uh, providing all the extensive list of facial and eye injuries he's had in the past, which he has probably the longest list of anyone in the AFL. Phil. There's no way it was intentional. Just see it that way and throw the damn thing out. Port Adelaide fans, we're now giving Goodness. you the chance to win yourself a double pass to the 5AA locker room. 8223 0055 is our comp line. Give us a call now. Port game versus Hawthorne this Saturday at the Adelaide Oval. You can get in if you win our quiz. 8223 0055. Let's quickly check your roads. Build now with Fairmont and save thousands. Free luxury kitchen and bathroom upgrades. T's and C's apply. There's a smash at Prospect, Main North Road at Edgeworth Street. Brooklyn Park reports of a breakdown on Henley Beach Road near Holbrooks Road. Blakeview Gasworks, Main North Road near Smith Road. That's affecting both directions. Speeds at 40 and Mile End. You'll find restrictions for works on Henley Beach Road near South Road, affecting both directions. Busy Henley Beach Road near Marion Road with cameras north-south motorway Bolivar, Potts Road, Evanston Park. Enjoy a chicken meal like no other from Aporto. Whole succulent chicken, flame grilled and basted with your choice of sauce and two delicious. Delicious sides, all for just twenty four ninety five. Adelaide's most accurate traffic on five double eight. You have just two days until the absolute final deadline in the Hospital Research Foundation Home Lottery. Next week, you could be collecting the keys to your fully furnished Scott Salisbury home in Somerton Park with half a million dollars to spend on whatever you want. Just imagine living mortgage free in beachside luxury. Join the fight for cures, better treatments and improved care by purchasing your tickets today at homelottery.com.au. Licence M14133. Don't just send it, ace it. If you're carrying job is driving you nuts, call If your current job is driving you bonkers, well, get outdoors and hit the road. Here's Chris from ASIC Couriers to tell you how. Thanks, Rowie. ASIC Couriers is growing, and we need more drivers to keep our promise of perfect service. So if you want a career that'll take you places, get in touch with us at ASIC Couriers. Visit asiccouriers.com.au. Don't just send it, ASIC. Peaceful living awaits at the 19th at West with golf course views, tree-lined walking trails and a cafe and retail shopping precinct opening soon. The best of the West is at your fingertips with new three and four bedroom designs and prices beginning from just 730k. It's no surprise 19th at West is selling quickly. Discover the new collection today. The 19thwest.com.au Delivered by Commercial and General. Proudly creating South Australian communities for 25 years. If you're planning an event, whether it's a small meeting with the latest in reliable technology or a large gala dinner full of glitz and glamour, you'll experience event excellence on every level at the Adelaide Convention Centre. Excellence in understanding your needs and delivering them to exacting standards is what we do. And we don't just aim for excellence, we go beyond. So for your next excellent event, the team is ready and waiting at the Adelaide Convention Centre, the centre of event excellence. There's one sign on Duthy Street only you must see. It's the Kirkbright Seafood sign. It changes daily, from fresh craze to Atlantic salmon, King George whiting, garfish and SA King prawns. All sustainably fished and processed on-site at Kirkbright Seafood. Not some faraway factory. It's a good sign that you're getting the best you can get. And so close to the city. See what's on the sign today. Kirkbright Seafood. Doothy Street only. 
kirkbrightseafood.com.au. G'day, it's Jared for Southern Mitsubishi. Thinking Mitsubishi or servicing your existing car? Southern Mitsubishi is your absolute go-to. Their state-of-the-art servicing technology and world-class quality control systems will ensure your vehicle gives you many years of hassle-free motoring pleasure. The same goes for buying a new Mitsubishi. They stock the full range, all designed to thrill. So get in touch with the amazing team at Southern Mitsubishi, 147 Main South Road, Morford Vale, driven by Australian Motors, LVD80. Scraped your caravan? Don't worry. Call Walker Crash Repairs, your RAA-approved caravan crash repairer. This is Rowie Sport Show. Ten minutes to five. Time to play our Port Adelaide quiz. First of two tonight. Two doubles to give away into the Port Adelaide locker room. Yeah, hottest tickets in town. Jared from Beverly. Hello. Okay, how you doing? You'll want to win this. Which power player was the only one to kick multiple goals on Saturday night? Game. He was a defender, <laughs> Jared. Oh, please <laughs> name a defender. I'll give you a clue. First one that comes uh, to your head. Elia, Elia. Oh, Jared. Let's go to Craig. Sorry, mate. Craig, which power player was the only one to kick multiple goals on Saturday night? Yeah, uh, Dan Houston. B O G. You are going, Craig. Well done. Congratulations. Port Adelaide take on Hawthorne Saturday night, seven ten. You get your tickets. Port Adelaide FC dot com dot au forward slash tickets. That is fantastic. Locker room doubles and another double after five. Fantastic. Easy as that. Uh, Kevin Sheedy now brought to us by BL Shipway, South Australian institution looking after SA's hydraulic and pneumatic needs for over 70 years. Kevin Sheedy. Don't ever let any club or player dominate you. No, I love those words. I feel great. Kevin Sheedy. Sheeds, not a bad round one. Well, it was great for most clubs of bar, isn't it? We had a very poor game, mm. and it was very disappointing. We were last in the ladder, I think, with about 52%. That was the sort of start to the season we wanted. But let's make sure we get back into it against a couple of good clubs in the next two weeks and, mm. uh, and see if we can get uh, get back in the ballpark of mm. being a, a bit of a ferocious footy team. How can that happen? You train for five months as a group. You talk it up, no. every coach does, and then you dish that crap up, Sheeds. No, very disappointing we were. Um, you wouldn't have to... Be a genius to understand that. Um, last year we were eight goals in at half time and lost. So we've had it from both ways in the last twelve months. So we're going to we just got to get our mindset better. Mm. Yeah. Nick Martin wasn't bad on debut. Five goals. Well, it's quite amazing. He wasn't even in the footy record. Oh, so I had to write yeah. I had to write his number in the record. Jeez. And um, and then try to work out. Um, he was another goal, another possession, another mark, another goal, another two, three possession, another goal. I mean, golly, so I'll tell you what, he's had a big start to his career, hasn't he? Not bad. We had one as well, Josh Rosselli, 18-year-old, yeah. yeah. kicked five on yeah. debut. Incredible. Incredible. I mean, a young boy at that part, I mean, uh, our, our young fellow was 21 and had some injuries, and, and even then he, he, he struggled to get over here because of mm. the lock-up, you know. Mm. Quite amazing. You never think you're going to miss out on an AFL career because of uh, a lock-up. <laughs> That's true. It's not a big sample size round one, but it's enough for me to no. suggest seven teams kicking over 90 points. The intent for well, coaches to well, attack more sheets. I like it. Well, the 666 does create that. Uh, I don't think people have worked out uh, some of the coaching panels on how to create a negative impact after a bit of a run on Tavern twice the Melbourne. Sorry, one ball was sort of twice the foot spray. And obviously it happened to us on the weekend too. So you might have 666, which creates a very open centre square to forward line, if you know what I mean. Mm. So the goal scoring power has been a lot much, a lot better yep. than what we were seeing two years ago, a year and a half ago, where you know, two goals or no goals at half time and flooding all the time. It's just boring everybody, you know, really. It wasn't very good footy at all, but now it's a little bit more exciting. Mm. I still think you've got to be able to control those uh, the hot moments when a team gets a run on. That's it. Momentum swings. If you can win centre square dominantly, four to centre square, with a dominant ruckman, chain it out of there and get it one-on-one -on -one inside 50, you're, you're a top eight team. If you can't do that, you're a bottom four. Well, that's that's fair enough. But, I mean, it's quite easy to say that. Um, I, don't think, I don't think coaches have really worked out how they can shut down a forward line uh, a lot smarter. I know what I would do, but I can't. I won't tell you. 
No, 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 Kevin Sheedy. Do not do well, that to me. You will tell well, us what you would do. Well, I, I just have my... If they're dominant, I, seeing that they are dominant, I'll probably have a running ruckman to be hit the ball and get back onto the ball quick, which we've got a fairly good ruckman like that. Mm -hmm. But I'd probably place my sentiment back on the defensive back end of the square, which gives me one extra yeah. back if I need it. You could. That no one's done that, Sheets. That is you're right. As soon boring, as the ball goes up, he just sprints back to the D fifty. Well he well he can start there. Or he can start <laughs> that's exactly right. <laughs> but you're giving one. them a plus one right at the coal face. But that's okay, but let's say you win it. That's true. You got a free player. Yeah. Don't mind that. Sheets, you just there's no doubt about you. You got oh, me thinking. I've got a little bit more up my sleeve. I've got a little bit more up my sleeve. Don't worry about that. Ooh, ooh. But look, I'll just tickle <laughs> your toes at the moment. You, you're like a wizard. You leave a bit up your sleeve, mate. Oh, you got to have a little bit up your sleeve. Well, well, okay, wizard sleeve. I'll give you this one. 27 50 metre penalties in nine games of AFL footy round one. Too many. many. How many should have been 25? Well, all of them. That's what we don't understand. I mm. mean,. There should be an inquiry into why they won't accept a rule of 25 metres. Tell me what the deal is. Yeah. Who's saying no? Or, I mean, you guys got it there. You don't seem to complain mm. as much. Uh, it, it, it gives a umpire a little bit of grace in regard to not such a harsh penalty for a flimsy mm. sort of maybe, maybe iffy 50s mm. at the moment. So I, I just think it's ridiculous, really. But mm. this will happen on all year until we get it. Yeah. Your our ambassador, I was thinking about this the other day, Sheeds, and I'll run it up your flagpole. So if you give away a 50 in your forward 50 or anywhere forward or centre, that's yeah. a shot on goal. That is a massive penalty. So maybe forward or centre, it's 25, and backward or centre, it can be 50. Oh, I don't think that'll be too hard. Some okay. of the 50 metres there deserve it. Okay. So my, my comment would be maybe the if the ball's a 60, 50 metre in the back half, the umpire tells the player where the mark is, right? Yep. And he doesn't have to stand on it. He pushes back into play, and once that player goes over that mark, it's play on. Yeah, the wizard. You can wizard. afford that I do. in the back half. I don't mind Lessen the problem. Lessen yeah. the problem. Yeah, I like that. Hey, hey, where do you sit with the Mitch Robinson suspension? So he stopped, he braced for contact, Dersma ran into him, Brisbane are con um, testing it tonight at the AFL Tribunal. What more can a player do other than jump out the way? I think if the player has stopped and the player that gets hit in the neck runs into the stationary player, I don't think that's uh, reported correct. all out. Yep, yeah, correct. Well, that's that's what I reckon happened. Otherwise, you'll have to run a ball ring out there and the matador's got to let the play go through. <laughs> you get the big... You, what is it? The big red... Yeah, the big red, yeah, just get a, just yeah. get a red one or a white Whatever. What's there? Whatever. Yeah. Well done, Sheets. <laughs> okay, mate. <laughs> well there done. you go. Well done. AFL great Kevin Sheedy, our guest. We love him. All thanks to Shippy. Yeah, Bill or Shipway has been looking after your hydraulic and pneumatic needs since 1953. So if you can get into their huge Richmond store, even if you can't, they'll send out a Ryko 24-7 van straight out to you. All right, Mark Bickley after 5 o'clock news. Have you tried pork santo bao yet? It's so quick and easy. You just fry up some pork mince, break up a lettuce, and pork santo wow. For more dinner winners, just visit pork.com.au and get some pork on your fork. Hey, do you want to go on a holiday? I'm not going anywhere without a queen-size bed, full-on suite with separate shower, kitchen, washing machine and a heater. Hey, where are you going? Dave Benson Caravans. For your next holiday, hit the road with Dave Benson Caravans and start living the dream. Dave Benson Caravans, Australia's largest indoor caravan showroom. Grand Junction Road, Kilburn or visit davebensoncaravans.com.au Smack on five o'clock, Bix after the news. Hey, you got a space in your shared workshop or around the home that is just 
begging to be storage space, well, get on to Shaman Shelving. They love turning any space into a storage space. It will look good too. Bill or Christine, look, they'll come to your home, your office, your workshop, or shed to measure up, then design, deliver, and assemble the perfect storage solution in a great range of colours. Goodbye space, hello storage space, and won't have to lift a finger. No, 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 no. All of it is done for you. Actually, you may have to point to the space that you want converted into storage, but that is about it. When it comes to storage solutions, everyone needs a little shaman in their life. Call into the showroom. That's at 412 Northeast Road, Windsor Guns. Visit shamanshelving.com.au or take a look on Facebook. Hi, I'm Victoria from The Family Cook. I'm passionate about cooking wholesome, fresh and delicious meals. We're the only meal delivery service based in South Australia using hand-selected premium ingredients such as free-range chicken, grass-fed beef, Australian fish and locally sourced vegetables and herbs. Our customers love it and I can guarantee you'll love it too. And we're proudly an NDIS provider. Jump on board thefamilycook.com.au Online on DAB Digital Radio and on 1395 AM, Talking Adelaide. This is Adelaide's 5AA. Partly cloudy tonight, a low of 15. With the 5 o'clock news, I'm Michaela Kamara. Check out Glider Roll Garage Doors' new Timber Look Native Series sectional doors. Gliderroll.com.au New Premier Peter Malinowskis has announced changes to how his government will manage COVID. It will scrap the COVID Ready Committee and replace it with the Emergency Management Council, a subcommittee of Cabinet. The COVID Ready Committee is not a decision making body. It does not have true power. Um, it doesn't have any specific authority invested in it. And I don't want to chair a committee that doesn't make decisions. Meantime, it's been revealed all non-urgent elective surgery in public hospitals were cancelled a day before the state election to help ease pressure on the struggling health system. It comes as new modelling shows case numbers could hit 8,000 a day in April due to the lifting of restrictions and the spread of the new Omicron variant. Chief Public Health Officer Professor Nicola Spiria says we've already seen a rise in cases today to 3,686 and four more deaths. Our hospitals are under a lot of pressure and we need to look very carefully at making sure that we can deal with all of those um, admissions. Labor says handing down another budget by the end of this year is the right thing to do if it wins the federal election. The opposition's Treasury spokesman Jim Chalmers has outlined some of the party's priorities ahead of the May poll. He says Labor would not be afraid to spend on quality infrastructure projects. Mr Chalmers says if he becomes the next Treasurer, money would not go to waste. We've got economic priorities around cleaner and cheaper energy, addressing the skill shortages, childcare. So if we were to win the election, uh, we would look to budget for those priorities before the end of the year and we'd look to start dealing with uh, the legacy of a decade of rorts and waste and corruption. A man has been jailed for five years over a road rage attack at Seaford last June. Heavily intoxicated Ryan Simpson reversed into a young woman's car on Commercial Road, then did a U-turn and slammed into it head on. He then attempted to mow down a witness filming the incident. The 40-year-old blew more than three times the legal alcohol limit. He's been banned from driving for 11 years upon his release. The US president believes there are clear signs Vladimir Putin is about to use chemical and biological weapons in Ukraine. Joe Biden has told NATO leaders the Russian president has his back to the wall as a result of the Ukrainian resistance. He says the world needs to be careful about what's next. They're also suggesting that Ukraine has biological and chemical weapons in Ukraine. That's a clear sign he's considering using both of those. He's already used chemical weapons in the past, and we should be careful about what's about to come. Rescuers haven't found any survivors among the 132 people on board the China Eastern flight which nosedived into a mountain. The 737-800 was cruising at more than 29,000 feet when it fell from the sky vertically before exploding into flames. 
Tuning to 5AA Sport. Don't miss out on your Hospital Research Foundation home lottery tickets. Hurry, tickets close midnight Thursday. Australia is currently 5 for 302 on day two of the third men's cricket test against Pakistan in Lahore. Meanwhile, Meg Lanning has made her 15th century as Australia beats South Africa at the Women's Cricket World Cup. The Aussie captain made an unbeaten 135 runs during the five wicket win in Wellington. Adelaide United assistant coach Ross Aloisi is leaving the Reds again. After returning to the club in 2020, he scored a job overseas. And emerging key forward Logan McDonald has re-signed with Sydney for a further two seasons. Now checking 5 AA traffic. Chipped windscreen? Complete windscreens repair it on the spot. $75. Completewindscreens.com.au At Brooklyn Park, reports of a breakdown at Henley Beach Road near Holbrooks Road. Blakeview Gasworks there, Main North Road near Smith Road affecting both directions, speeds at 40 and Mile End you'll find restrictions for works on Henley Beach Road near South Road affecting both directions. Busy Tapley's Hill Road to Donald Brabham Drive to West Beach Road and Cameras Cavern Road, Dry Creek Haydown Road at Elizabeth Grove Is your BMW due for a service? Bring your existing BMW service inclusive package and book your next day service online now at Glenelg BMW Adelaide's most accurate traffic on 5AA now the 5 to belay forecast. Get the Toyota Forklift Advantage. Visit toyotamaterialhandling.com.au Partly cloudy tonight, a low of 15. Partly cloudy tomorrow, 22. Thursday, much the same, 23. And Friday, mostly sunny, a top of 24. Right now, it's 21. Now let's hear what's happening on Nine News Tonight. Just as the end of the pandemic seemed in sight, South Australians have been told to brace for a COVID surge, as many as 8,000 cases a day, amid stunning claims by the new Premier of a health crisis kept secret from us all. I think South Australians are entitled to know where we're at. I'm Kate Collins. See the full story on Nine News Tonight at 6. Ray White. Big name in real estate but also the biggest name in business broking. What makes us big? Our people, like Brett Buckley and his team. MBA, lecturer, and multi-time SA Business Broker of the Year. Brett doesn't just read a P&L, he feels it. If you're selling or expanding your business, Brett can take your business apart and find you more money. And we're not talking small change. Go on, touch base with Brett. Search Ray White Business Sales SA. Folks travel from far and wide to meet Trev from Rollico. G'day, is Trev around? Oh, sorry, mate, he's uh, with the customer right now. Trev's always eager to please. Just pat him on the belly and he'll do anything for you. Oh, yes, Trev said order your sliding door or window parts online and use the code 5AA for 10% off. Rollico.com.au. They'll get you rolling. Hmm? No, I'm not patting you on the belly. <laughs> oh, all right. Scraped your caravan? Don't worry. Call Walker Crash Repairs, your RAA-approved caravan crash repairer. This is Rowie's Sport Show. It's seven minutes after five. Alex Carey's brought up a 50 in the third test over in Lahore. Great news. Australia currently five for 305. And currently, Rory Sloan is live in the AFL Tribunal, claiming contact was careless not intentional in his bid to get off his one ban, one game ban. He's quoted saying, there's no way in the world I would go anywhere near anyone's eye. His career was almost ended last year because of his own. So very interesting. We'll continue to follow that. Mark Bickley's here live. All thanks to McGain Real Estate. McGain Real Estate, if you're selling, they have buyers ready to go right now. Sold by McGain again. Number 26, the captain, Mark Bickley. The skip. Mark Bickley. Yeah, lines available, so get on the blower. We've got Bix here for the next half hour. Eight double two three double O double O. Bix, welcome. Good morning. Oh, good afternoon. I should say. I was just reading <laughs> something. I was looking for some stats. You got me on the hop there, but uh, yes, what a day! And mm. um, yeah, there's a lot going on, isn't there? Including Rory Sloan at the tribunal, which we're hopefully going to hear some sort of result from soon. Well, let's start there. He's had a displaced retina. We just heard. Um, He's saying exactly that at the AFL Tribunal. I think it's an indictment on his integrity if Fremantle and Akers, in actual fact, did dob in on him. There is no way he intentionally set out yeah. to do that in that skirmish on the ground. Look, it, I, I tend to agree. Um, when when the match review say it's intentional, like it, it has to be really, really Correct. conclusive and there has to be great 
footage of it. And um, yeah, there, there has to be little doubt. And particularly when you're talking about mm. a guy who's had a long career, high integrity, you know, like lots of mm. it, president of the Players Association, all those things. He's got a lot of lot of uh, chips on the table, I would think. And and um, yeah, it's just not something that I you would envisage him doing. And if there's going to be ever a benefit of the doubt, you'd probably give it to the bloke who's had a cracking, cracking record for a long time. Should be downgraded. How'd you see the Mitch Robinson one suspended? They're challenging it. Mm. And I thought Dersman ran into him. I thought he did legitimately show a duty of care and tried to stop. Yeah, no, I'm a bit different on this one. Okay. When, when a player's running and their head's over the footy, you, you just can't meet them front on. And when you say, oh, I'm protecting myself, I turn my body. But when you turn your body and put your hip and it makes contact, well, fortunately, it did just look like the shoulder and the side of the neck. But when we're talking that, um, that front on contact with the top of someone's head and we know the potential damage that it can do, we just have to have to just make every effort to make sure So that what should have he done? Just turn to the side, grab them by the side. Like when someone's running at you, there's any what, what what could have possibly happened? What what was Mitch Robinson hoping to achieve? Well, well I thought he stopped and I thought the, the contact was engaged by Durs, but now, now Durs was running of, one way and they were, they were coming one hundred and eighty degrees apart yeah, from each and, other. But but Durs was always going to get there first. So what was what's happened next? Well, well, I thought he did the right thing. He stopped. I, he legitimately stopped and turned his body. So other than jumping out of the way, if that's what we want to see, well, so be it. Let's say that. Mm. Let, 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 let's say you should have jumped out of the way and gave him right of way. But if, but if someone's going to win the ball before you and they're running in one direction and you're running in the other direction, you cannot continue to run in that direction because there's only one thing that can happen. He picks the ball up. He's got his head over it. If you're not going to get there first. Well, David McKay did it last year. Exactly the same thing. But that was abs out. they actually hit within a millisecond. You mm. watch that. There is no way that Mitch Robinson is winning that ball. Okay. There is just no way he's winning it. In the heat of the battle, in the click of a finger, we've got to make those decisions. It, and that's exactly what happens. Okay. We, players make those decisions a thousand times a game. And when you make a wrong one, nobody's saying that Mitch Robinson's a bad no, person. No, 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 no. But, you, but you'd like to see him suspended for that. Well, I just think we have to. Because yeah. otherwise, we're going to see someone with a broken neck. And... You know, you read in the paper yesterday, you've got, uh, we know that the head is the biggest challenge to our game. We know that. Uh, fortunately, it hit him in the, the, the collarbone, but that's more good luck than good management, I think, in regards to what could have happened. And, you know, like Daniel Venables is mm. suing the AFL for $8 million because his career has been ended mm. by a concussion. Yeah, now, that only that. has to happen a couple of times, mm. and the whole game is in jeopardy in terms of how we play it. Okay. Uh, 30 minutes past five. Have your say. We've got Bix in the studio. We're more than 24 hours out from the Crows' one-point loss. How How's it sitting with you now? Look, I think when we spoke before the game, and we talked about both teams being really inexperienced, uh, and I think both teams had four players with more than 100 games experience. So, mm. so one of the things we said was... 13 under 50. Yeah, there's going to be mistakes. There's yeah. going to be moments where Adelaide dominate the game. There's going to be moments where Fremantle dominate the game because consistency is one of the issues that young players have, being able to stay in the game for the whole 120 minutes, and that's exactly what happened. Fremantle did it better for 60 mm. minutes. Then they went missing for probably a quarter and a half, but from the third quarter and halfway into the last... Adelaide, 19 points up with seven minutes to play. And in Adelaide, yes. had a bit of a brain fade. They lost their composure. They weren't able to, to close out the game. They made some uh, horrible turnovers that, that cost goals. They had lapses in concentration. They gave away a free kick for not having mm. six players in their yeah. forward. Like, like basic, basic errors. Yeah. You know, you can go and watch any game of amateur footy and mm. they have six players in the forward line, six in the middle and six in defence. Well, how, under 12s do. How can, how can, the, how can an <laughs> oh, AFL yeah. team not get that right mm. at a time when they have to get it right, yeah. when the game is in the balance? So that's a learning experience and that's what young players hopefully will take out of the game. They'll go through that in the uh, the debrief. They'll talk about what went wrong and, and mm. the, the people on the, the bench should be having a look at themselves as well mm. about how that happens because clearly it would have been interchange someone's yep. gone on they've gone into the wrong position were they told the wrong position did they not listen did they not concentrate there's a whole range of things that they'll look at doing better but i think the the one positive thing the couple of the young players played well but also they actually played a style of footy in the third quarter that showed they could score because right now that's Six goals enough that's yeah. still their biggest issue yeah, they can't score is. let's go to myrtle bank hello rod Oh, good evening, boys. Uh, look, I'm a relatively positive person and understand all that you've said tonight and 
after the call on uh, on the weekend. Um, however, um, what struck me was um, how poor uh, some of the disposal is still with some of the players, you know, and, and I'm going to single out Wayne Miller. Um, the knock on him two years ago was that he can't dispose of the ball and uh, and, and and the weekend was still terrible. I, I don't understand how somebody who is so gifted and skillful, um, you know, can not dispose of the ball um, and and consistently poorly. Um, and also, I, um, I I've loved the good games that um, Himmelberg has played, but uh, and I heard Bix's comments after the game, but. Um, yeah, crunch time for that young lad as well. Hopefully, they all improve, but um, I think there's some decision making around some of these players. Mm, yep, couldn't agree more, Rod. I think we can cut Wayne Miller with some slack. I think he's one of the more skillful players for Adelaide, and the fact he hasn't played an AFL game for two years. So you come back in, there's the heightened pressure of uh, of round one, and look, he's probably a bit nervous as well. And early on, yeah, he he made a couple of blues by foot and. Uh, once again, he went oh, on his Pat Malone exactly. twenty clearance to half time. And they that was that's a composure thing. I heard Matthew Nix in the press conference afterwards saying maybe they were a bit too wound up. Maybe they got him too fired up. We before said the that game. at half time, but how can that happen? Well, just you know, getting him stirred up, you know, getting him motivated. They're all Come on, yeah, all it's go. Let's, go. Let's kill him. Yeah, but you've just got to have a bit of composure that's as well. True. But Himmelberg, Thorpe, Fogarty, they've played three games. That that sort of forward group. They've kicked eight goals in combination in three yeah. games. Joshua Shelley's played three games total in his life and he's kicked 11. <laughs> so if your three key forwards uh, have kicked eight goals in three games, you're in you, know, sorts, you're, yeah. you are in some strife. Yeah. We understand that Taylor Walker is out, but guess what? Taylor Walker's not going to be in Adelaide's next premiership side and mm. he's not going to be there forever. So mm. these players, Fogarty, Thilthorpe, Him Himmelberg, and I'm, I'm prepared to give Thilthorpe a little bit more leniency because he's a very young man. He's only entering his second season. But Fogarty and Himmelberg, five years and whatever, mm. you know, like when you're on a list, they got they got developed bodies. The expectation is clear of what AFL footy is all about. You've got to start to produce at some stage. I agree with that. Keep your calls coming in. Bix is here until 5.30, What have we got, a $50 Pals or a... Pals? Yep. Bro, we can give whatever you want. Yep, Pals you whatever you want. <laughs> Hello, Remington Steele from Melbourne. G'day. <laughs> G'day, mate. How are you? I bet you haven't been called that before. Oh, I have by you, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you get a time. new gig, Rowie. Get a new shtick. You got Bix. What's your, what's your story? Hey, um, mate, I'm, I'm massive. Supporter. Everybody knows that. Massive supporter since I was a kid. And I've got to say this, and I've been biting my tongue with it for a while. I think we need a new coach. Honestly, it's, oh, wow. I, I, know, I know that's a pretty big thing to say that. but It's a, I, it's a very big thing. Yeah, <laughs> Remington's <laughs> both fallen off our chair, Remington Iron. <laughs> it's just, it, you look at other coaches, what they've done in the league, and, you know, we we had some pr we had a pretty bad year last year. I mean, pretty bad. Seven wins. It was and, a growth year. I think it was a growth year, Remington. And if 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 you look at what I guess other clubs have had, other pl other coaches have been sacked for it. Remington, and they generally, played not, against yeah. Melbourne with a similar profile. longmire has been there for two years, and the Crows lost by a point. So should we sack Justin as well? Or do you think he's doing a better job? I wouldn't say he's doing a better job. Okay. Gee, you're no, brutal, I, would, I, I, I wouldn't say he's doing a better job at all. Well, but I'll it, say it, this. If Alistair Clarkson said to the board, I'm here, that'd be the only reason, Remington. But it'd want to be an Alistair Clarkson. You've got to back the man in, Nixie. Well, and let's let's just be pragmatic. Thanks for Thanks, your call, Remington. Remington. It's not going to happen. No, of course You don't not. extend the contract of a coach by a couple of years. Now, they've done that before, and you end up with egg on your face when you end up sacking them. You look stupid. Uh, and... If you, you so after doing that twice with Brendan they Sanderson, out Sanderson, didn't they? Yeah, for, yeah, they extended him by a couple of for years and, and then uh, sacked him, and then they've they've parted ways with Don Pike for whatever reason. So Don decided it wasn't the place for him anymore. So and he had an extension; he had time to go on his contract, and he received paid him out. Yeah, some sort of severance, I'm sure. So so if you're going to do that, and they've done it with Matthew Nix, they 
clearly you would have gone through a process and say, we like what this man brings to the table and there's enough here to suggest that, that we've got to continue to back him. So they're not going to do anything no. at the end of this year. And, and, and there's every chance that they could go backwards this year. Like it's, not, it's not an exact science, but what you want is you want the young players to start to show something and you want the, the, a, a development path where you can see people improving. Now, a couple of things that you took out of, that I took out of the game is, is the foot skills for Adelaide are so important. And when they got the balance right with Dawson looked great down back, we know that Smith can kick it down back. Shoal looked like a player worthy of investing in. Now, I, I just shouldn't, I just can't, I don't want to see him start as sub next week. I think he's got to be a player that you're going to persist with. If you're going to talk about getting 40 games into someone, he's the one you want to do it yeah. to. And blokes like Andrew McPherson, I think, might be in a bit of strife because okay. he doesn't offer what Shoal offers. Hello, Pete. G'day, guys. How are we? Good, thanks. Hey, uh, just a few points, if I may, regarding the Crows. So, Vic, just I'll lead with that one right there, which I agree 100%. I couldn't believe that Sholey missed out because I rate him much more highly than this person. Um, so he's been just a little bit disappointing of late. His defending at times seems a bit lackadaisical and his lateral movement seems to be non-existent. So, but that's just my opinion. I might be wrong. Oh, do you want me to respond to that? I, I think he's more dour and he's a better defender than what shoulders, but I reckon the game these days is less about one-on-one -on -one defending than it's ever been. It's about getting extra numbers back there and zone defence and players roll on and roll off players. So I don't think defending is as is as as important as what it was or has been in years gone by. Okay, McGain Real Estate brings us Mark Bickley. Keep the calls coming in, eight double two three double O double O. It's 21 minutes after five. The verdict is pending in the Rory Sloan Tribunal case. The judiciary is retired to consider the matter, so we'll get to that very shortly. Call now, though, eight double two three double O double five. We're going to play our mystery sports with Bix next, all thanks to the Borough Hotel Group, because uh, I know Bix likes to play uh, sort of quizzes and games and stuff Dude, with love us, it. so you can it's try and guess master, our four <laughs> sports moments four in a row if you do 450 bucks all yours so call now eight double two three double oh double five time for your traffic build now with fairmont and save thousands with free luxury kitchen and bathroom upgrades t's and c's apply at Brooklyn Park, reports of a breakdown on Henley Beach Road near Holbrooks Road. Blakeview Gas Works, Main North Road near Smith Road, affecting both directions and Mile End. You'll find restrictions for works on Henley Beach Road near South Road. Busy Tapley's Hill Road to Donald Rabbit Drive to West Beach Road and a few cameras too. Cavern Road, Dry Creek, Adelaide Road, Gawler South and Haydown Road at Elizabeth Grove. Enjoy your favourite Mexican food with Guzmani Gomez and save. Score yourself burritos and bowls for just nine ninety. Yes, just nine ninety when you order via the GYG app. Adelaide most accurate traffic on 5AA. Adelaide's favourite southerner, Fitzy, joins 5AA Breakfast each Friday with his AFL footy tips. Thanks to House Inspect Australia. Trust House Inspect Australia, the most qualified team in Australia for house inspections. Search House Inspect Australia. Time to find out what's making news in the Channel 7 newsroom as we welcome Rosanna Mangiarelli to the show. And Rosanna alarming COVID case predictions. I know, Rowie, this is news no one wants to hear, but new modelling's showing they're going to triple in a matter of weeks, so around Easter time uh, to around 10,000 cases a day. At the moment, we're hovering around 3,500, a little bit higher than that today. So frightening figures, mm. but also how the new Premier plans to tackle the surge and what it means for restrictions as well. Um, we'll bring you chilling video of the moment that passenger plane nosedived in China, 132 people on board. Also, the Adelaide suburbs with the cheapest childcare. The results actually might surprise your mm. listeners. Uh, why the price of uh, weekly grocery shops about to rise yet again. Mm. And the Crows, as you guys have been talking about this afternoon, of course, of Challenge Rory Sloan's ban. Um, we'll take you live to the tribunal hearing for a result there. So we'll see you tonight. Seven News at six. Thanks, Rosanna. That's Rosanna Mandrilli and all the team at Channel 7. There's only one choice. Seven News tonight at six. Seen the new quick and easy recipes at pork.com.au yet? I have. It's how I turned Sanchoy Bao into Pork Sanchoy Wow. There's so many other recipes too. Because as they say, dinner winners are easy when there's pork on your fork. Don't just get a forklift. When you need a forklift, don't just get a forklift. Get a Toyota forklift. 
Get the world's number one forklift brand. Get legendary Toyota reliability. Get world-leading safety. And get it from toyotamaterialhandling.com.au. Get the Toyota forklift advantage. For sales, service and hire... G'day, it's Mark Bickley. When you buy a leader computer, you're buying a computer made right here in Adelaide. You're dealing with people that live in Adelaide. And when it comes to servicing or support, it all happens here in Adelaide. Not overseas, not interstate. Unlike some others, Leader don't have to send anything off for repair. They take care of everything right here. It makes sense to live life local. Live life Leader. Leader Computers. Find your local dealer at leadersystems.com.au. This is Paula. Paula loves her pool. Nothing beats a refreshing splash in the sun. But Paula has a problem. She gets the gilts having the pump on all day. Well, Paula, save your gilts for walking through the house with wet feet. Because NRG Solar gives you electricity guilt-free. Just guilt-free clean pools all day long. Electricity guilt-free with NRG. <clears throat> Dry your feet, Paula. NRGsolar.com.au Hi, Bronte Manual from Toop and Toop. We've been helping Adelaide buyers and sellers for almost 40 years. That's why so many South Australians look to us for real estate advice. Right now, we're working with 4,904 buyers in Turak Gardens, 4,651 in Wayville, and 4,938 buyers in McGill all searching for their perfect property in these specific locations. If you're thinking of selling and would like to know how many buyers we're working with in your suburb, go to toop.com.au. Scraped your caravan? Your insurance should cover that. Speak to Walker Crash Repairs and let them fix it. This is Rowie's Sports Show. It's 26 minutes after five. This is the mystery voice. Rowie's Sports Show, Mystery Sports. There's a man who really does deserve the applause. It's your turn for the narrative for this special moment. He's in big trouble! The emotion overflows as it often does. You only need to get three of those four because we've already given away one of them. The third moment is Buster Douglas Mm. knocking out... Uh, Mike Tyson in 1990. So if you can get the other three, 450 bucks is all yours. And if you don't, that's okay. $50 Bro Hotel Group voucher. Just for trying. How good's that? Steve from Gore, how are you? You've not called for the mystery sports, have you? No, I haven't. And, uh, well, no one else has either. <laughs> 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 well, geez, I wouldn't have a go. I wouldn't have a clue who they, what they are. No, that's uh, all right. Quick I a guy from work who listens to your show, Wayne. Yeah. Um, I wanted to talk, I agree with Mark Bickley for a change regarding Mitch Robinson and um, I wonder when they're going to bring the red card in Rowie and Bix um, because this guy or anybody anybody that creates uh, an incident like that um, gets gets uh, games for two, three, four weeks but not on the day that you know that uh, he's affected our game mm. you know he's hurt Terzma and he stays on the ground you know, next week... There was he, no he intent, off. Steve. So you yeah. wanted him to come off the ground. No, we no, have no, a red no. card, well, he's Rowie, off. Rowie, not that incident, but the real okay. some bad one. Yeah. Um, right. I'm saying that, you know, he, he gets... Let's say he gets four weeks off because he's broken someone's arm or something. Okay. Um, you know, yeah, what happens? Yep. Yeah, but I guess, Steve... Thanks, the, Steve. The flip side of that is sometimes the, the tribunal clears blokes where you think, mm. oh, that's uh, really bad, but then that works out, he doesn't get cleared, you can't take that back, and I guess it swings and roundabouts, isn't it? I don't it? want red cards. The, the day where someone injures one of your players and, and you don't get the benefit, but next week you might play a team that's got a player that's out suspended, so you get the benefit of that. And you end up with DRSs step. and all sorts of things, appeals, mm. nah, don't like it, Steve, sorry about that. Hello, Samara. Hello. Okay, oh. here we go, our mystery sports. Have a listen. Rowie's Sports Show, Mystery Sports. There's a man who really does deserve the applause. It's your turn for the narrative for this special moment. He's in big trouble! The emotion overflows as it often does. You have a $50 Barrow Hotel Group voucher just for trying, so here we go. Number one? Uh, 1993 Australian Grand Prix. Number two? Uh, The 2013 United States Masters in golf. Number three? Douglas knocking out Tyson in boxing. And number four? Uh, the SA NFL Grand Final from uh, 1991. Okie dokie. How do they add up? How many of them are there? I think 450. A couple of pretty good ones. It sounds like four in a row. <laughs> oh, oh my, my goodness, Samara! <laughs> I 
that's incredible. Did you pluck that out your lemonade or you've been sitting on it? <laughs> oh, no, my dad and I, we're huge sports fans, so he definitely helped me out with a few of these. But, um, yeah, no, we just love it. Samara, you've that's won incredible. 400. That's incredible. That's amazing. 450 <laughs> big ones, Samara. That's incredible. That's amazing. Thank you so much. You've done very well for the Bro Hotel Group. Congratulations. Thanks for that. No worries. Thank you so much. Well, just when we thought. Yeah, well done. Mm. It was dying a slow death, Bix. Well, I was <laughs> thinking Samara that... comes out of the woods <laughs> and gets us four. Well, when the, the Sandville Grand Final, and I thought it might have been 1984 when Tim Evans and uh, yeah. Craig Barn were going at it, but I was, I was only seven years out. 450 <laughs> big ones, Bro yeah. Hotel Group. That's we awesome. love them. That is fantastic. Before you go, Bix, I want to play this. Rochelle kicked five. He was the story of the game. Outstanding. Matty Lloyd had this to say. He's like a bit like Modra. I know it's a big call, but I think the crowd will love him yeah. in a way that they love Modra. One game. <laughs> oh boy! Oh boy! A bit like Modra. C clearly didn't live oh, wow. in Adelaide with um, us, and uh, we played with mods. Mods kicked a hundred goals after twenty-one games. After forty-one games, he had two hundred. After seventy-six games, he had three hundred. Uh, no pressure. <laughs> I would have Georgie. thought maybe maybe a bit more recent, and and the uh, fact that. Tony's a high-flying, spectacular player. Oh, maybe more Eddie Betts, Charlie Cameron style. Maybe a bit I would more love sort of that. Ed enigmatic, freakish yeah, type. But great um, lad. Anyway, uh, it's exciting, and let's hope he can continue. As I said, he's kicked eleven in, in the three games that he's played, and Fogarty, Thilthorpe, and Himmelberg have hit eight between them in the yeah, same three games. Stand. So I'll tell you what's going to happen, though. He's going to get a lot of attention in the next couple of weeks, he I will think. Well yeah. done, Bix. McGain Real Estate, if you're selling, they have buyers ready to go right now. Sold by McGain again. All right. We can, and, and you can also ask them about their Ma McGain match. Sold by McGain again. Great company. Well done, Bix. Nice to have you in. 4.30 time for the headlines. Darcy Byrne-Jones, Port fans, will join us next. 5AA Breakfast. Professor Spurrier is understood to support the retention of a 15-minute close contact rule. Well, to Peter Malinowskis' point, tell us why. We need an explanation, unless we've got some wacky new pizza box strain that's different from the way it operates in Melbourne or Sydney or Brisbane or Hobart. Informing Adelaide. Why do we have a 15-minute rule here in South Australia? 6am weekdays on 5AA. This is Adelaide's 5AA. Good afternoon, I'm Michaela Kamarek. The state government is directing SA Health to urgently set up additional hospital capacity for COVID, with modelling showing case numbers are expected to surge to 8,000 a day in April. A drunk driver has been jailed for five years over a road rage attack at Seaford last June. The US president believes there are clear signs Vladimir Putin is about to use chemical and biological weapons in Ukraine. And Australia has defeated South Africa by five wickets in a group stage match at the Women's Cricket World. World Cup. Now checking 5AA traffic. At Blakeview Gasworks on Main North Road near Smith Road, that's affecting both directions. Speeds at 40. My land, you'll find restrictions for works on Henley Beach Road near South Road, affecting both directions. Darlington works on the Flagstaff Road upgrade, continue near the South Road intersection, and we're busy Tapley's Hill Road to Donald Brabant Drive to West Beach Road. Cameras Main North Road, Mawson Lakes, Potts Road at Evanston Park. If you're driving today and there's someone or something that needs your attention and it can't wait, pull over because there's no one driving if you're distracted. Think road safety. Adelaide's most accurate traffic on 5AA. Clear tonight, a low of 16. Possible showers tomorrow, 26. Right now, it's 21. More news at 6 o'clock and as it happens on 5AA. You have just two days until the absolute final deadline in the Hospital Research Foundation Home Lottery. Next week, you could be collecting the keys to your fully furnished Scott Salisbury home in Somerton Park with half a million dollars to spend on whatever you want. Just imagine living mortgage-free in beachside luxury. Join the fight for cures, better treatments and improved care by purchasing your tickets today at homelottery.com.au. Licence M14133. Hey, it's Callum here. As a chef, I know that confidence in the kitchen equals success. The same goes for buying a new Mazda. You can feel confident in the team at Edwardstown Mazda because they've been doing it for years. Looking for something small, medium or large, Edwardstown Mazda have most models in stock ready to drive away. But remember, everybody wants to drive a Mazda in 2022, so hurry. It's gotta be. EdwardstownMazda.com.au LMVD 207428.
DBJ coming up. Hey, when it comes to sport, it is so important to help protect our kids from head impacts and big concussion. Yeah, and here's some important stats to think about. As many as 50% of concussions may go unreported. Concussions account for 90% of all traumatic brain injuries in kids and 25% of childhood concussions come from playing sport. Now, they are compelling stats, but thankfully, there's now a product exclusively available through Boopa Dental Care called Hit IQ. Hit IQ is a smout, smart mouth guard, I should say, that registers head impacts. If we had this in my day, I wouldn't be such a dopey. <laughs> no, it's, it's really interesting, isn't it? Because a lot of the AFL players are now wearing the Hit IQ mouth guard, and how it works is it has sensors within the Hit IQ mouth guard which detect impact, mm. uh, which are then collated and assessed. After the game, alerts are sent to your Hit IQ app, which you have on your phone, and it informs you of any head impacts that have been detected by the mouth guard. So the sensors in the that mouth guard, you charge your mouth guard, then you download it onto your phone and it tells that you is unreal. how many impacts to the head you've had, how serious they are. And remember, head impacts can have lasting impacts for kids, so help protect them from the sidelines. You can do that by purchasing a Hit IQ mouth guard, only available through Boopa Dental Care. Find out more and book a consult at boopadental.com.au. A kid's playground, rubbish. A park bench, rubbish. A nature boardwalk, rubbish. You see, the Australian government is helping industry to transform your old rubbish into incredible new things, proudly remade in Australia. Like this outdoor gym, rubbish. Even this brand new road, rubbish. Every time you recycle, you're helping to remake Australia into a better place for everyone. Remade in Australia. Authorised by the Australian Government, Canberra. Who can fix the shower? Service today. Who can fix the power? Service today. Yes, we can, is what we say. Service today. From emergency plumbing to electrical and heating and cooling, no matter what size job you need, at Service Today, the answer will always be yes, we can. It's Service Today guaranteed or it's free. Can you fix the shower? Yes, we can. Can you fix the power? Yes, we can. Yes, we can, is what we say. Service Today. Look out for our bright yellow trucks. Ever paid 30 bucks for a schnitty? You've probably paid garnish tax. All those little alfalfa sprouts, parsley sprigs, the nonsense you push to the side, you're paying for it. Sure, it looks pretty, but there's nothing like a simple, hearty meal the way you know and love without garnish tax. 722 are cooking classics for just $14.90. Monday to Friday, lunch and dinner. Simple, tasty, $14.90. For a bar and bistro the way it's meant to be, visit 722 Port Road, Beverly. Scraped your caravan? Don't worry. Call Walker Crash Repairs, your RAA approved caravan crash repairer. This is Rowie's Sports Show. 23 minutes to six. Barry Hall ahead of his bout tomorrow night against Sonny Bill Williams to join us in the next half hour. We still have a locker room double to give away to the Port Adelaide game against Hawthorne on Saturday night. That's coming up in the next 25 minutes. And, of course, we'll chat to Darcy byrne Jones in just a moment. But a quick text coming through. This one here. Rowie, you're having a go at Matthew Lloyd for going off early. Yep. Just like him saying on the weekend, just like you, sorry, saying on the weekend that Smith's mother was the best in the history of the game. <laughs> He's up turbo. Well, it was. Let's get it was guess. pretty good. Now, it's all thanks to One Solution. Protect and improve your business with One Solution. Winner of the National Telstra Enterprise Customer Excellent Award. Well, Port have a few injury concerns before round two. After a brutal game, joining us is one of their stars, Darcy Byrne-Jones. DBJ, welcome. Cheers for having me, guys. Good man. That was a tough physical game, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Um, obviously, we came off with a few injuries, but um, yeah, whenever you go up and play Brisbane, they've got some some tough inside mids and some um, really tough forwards. So um, you always expect a pretty brutal game, and and that's what we got. Mm. Twenty four points up late in the third quarter. They kicked the last two before three quarter time, and then they kicked five in the last quarter. What happened there, DBJ? What have you been able to assess with the coaches? Yeah, we, we think there was probably um, about a 10 or 15 minute patch um, probably at the start of the fourth quarter, um, maybe just towards the end of the third quarter where we, we didn't play the way that we needed to. And um, for the majority of the, the game, apart from that period, we played some, some really tough footy and we controlled the game and, and we sort of went away for that, away from that for, for about 10 to 15 minutes and, and we paid the price for it and they, they kicked away and kicked mm -hmm. a few goals and were able to grab some momentum and um, their crowd got behind them and, and they got over the top of us. Yeah. Momentum swings there, 
bloody hard to stop. What, what, what are the triggers or how do you do it or curb it? What, what, are you, what are you trying to do in those circumstances as a group, Darcy? Yeah, I, I guess, I guess uh, first and foremost, you've got to identify um, that it's happening um, and, and that they're, they're wrestling the momentum and then um, spread, that, spread that message throughout the group and, and focus on, on what you can, can do next and your next action, your next contest. Um, making making sure that they they don't don't win the next contest. You know that that you either mm. win or halve or or get the ball out of bounds or force a stoppage or um, you know stick a tackle. So it, it just comes back to to what you can do in your next action. Really, I think. Yeah, it, it helps if when it goes back in the middle, you can win the ruck knot. It helps if you can win it into your forward fifty and then lock it in. And they won five of the seven in that last quarter and walked it out of that centre square easily. Um, can that be fixed? Quickly, is that a quick fix? Was that identified? Um, yeah, it's it's something at the Gabba that certainly, um, you know, centre bounce is really important up there. Mm. The ground does seem quite short. Um, the ground's quite hard as well, so the ball sort of bounces a little bit further if you get the ball um, moving your way. So, um, you know, it's, it's something that's really important um, at it. at um, all grounds, but at the Gabba, it's really important, and, and they were, like you said, able to to win a few important ones and get the ball um, in their forward line and um, with some really dangerous forwards they were able to um, put some score on the board in the last quarter especially. Yeah. Ken said after the game, you play like that, you're going to win more games than you you lose and I'll agree with that. That was by far the best standard game, the most brutal game of the nine. Um, does that loss give the group more confidence or less after Ken saying that? And the other thing is, is it's another top four team that you haven't been able to beat, Darcy. Yeah, I think um, in the past we've probably gone up to Brisbane and, and haven't been proud of the way that we've okay. um, played and, and the attitude that we've, we've take, taken up there. Um, and we've been out of the game sort of a quarter time. So we're able to stick, um, stick pretty fat and... <laughs> and play some tough footy throughout. So we've taken a lot of confidence um, out of that um, in terms of the way we played for the majority, but um, obviously pretty disappointing to go up there and, like you said, lose um, um, to a top, a top four side and a quality, quality side again um, that we believe that we could beat. Mm. I'll tell you what might help is sign a five-year deal. Dan Houston did. What a game. That, that, he, that was the most complete game, I reckon, Darcy. How good was he, Dan Houston? Yeah, yeah he's... Um, he's a really talented player, obviously. Um, the way he uses the footy and, and the way he uses his legs to um, to take metres and he's really accurate with his kicking and, and really important to the way we play. So um, it was great to see some reward for him and probably the best game he's, he's played um, throughout his career. Um, so hopefully he can keep that, that form up and um, continue on his, on his winning ways and, and playing really strong footy for us. Yeah, you got some elite legs in that back half. Uh, Alir Alir, he's out of surgery. Uh, big blow, that one. Um, have you spoken to him? Is he all right? How's it all going? Yeah, he, he's not too bad here. Obviously, you know, pretty disappointed to be out for an extended time um, after you, you get through a, a long, hard, hot pre-season and feel like you're in really good form and coming off a really good year to be um, dealt a blow like this is... Yeah. Um, pretty disappointing, but he's in good spirits. He's always in good spirits. Um, he's a, f a fun fun kind of guy to be around, so I'm sure he'll, when he comes back into the club, bring that energy as well. And um, Yeah, we're, we're going to have to um, deal with the loss of him when you lose a mm. all Australian defender. It's, um, it's not ideal, but um, we're lucky we've got some, some pretty good depth and um, whoever does come in, I'm sure we'll fill a role. Mm. Aaliyah out, Tommy Cleary already out. Great news for McKenzie. When he went down with that stiff knee, Darcy, I thought, oh, 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 oh. Yeah. out comes the ambulance and off he goes. It's great news that it's not an ACL. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, after the game, we're, we're pretty shattered for, yeah. for the big moose. But, um, yeah, it's been great news on, on that front. He's um, up and about and was moving around today. So we're having a bit of, laugh, bit of a laugh with him that um, he was carrying on a little <laughs> bit, um, getting the stretcher and giving the big thumbs up and the, and the wave and, and all that jazz. But, um, <laughs> no, it's great news to have him back. He's a... He's an important player for us, and he, yeah. um, he's played some really consistent footy for us for a couple of years now, so um, it's good news that he, he'll be back soon. Oh, I love footballers. We, 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 we keep everyone honest, DBJ. Hey, uh, I <laughs> yeah. thought his nickname was The Cannon. Where did the moose come from? I'm not, I'm not quite sure. Um, he just The way he operates, he's just a big, 
Moose. Um, lumbering kind of moose. <laughs> He's just a so moose. That's, that's is it the stuck. size of his scone? Has he got a big scone, has he? Got a big head. Oh, he's got a he's got a decently sized scone. Okay. I'm not sure how big the brain is inside of it, but oh, uh, that'll get back. Ouch. Um, no, he's a, he's a good man, the moose. Okay, Sam Skinner, be exciting if he could sneak in. Tell us about him. Yeah, yeah, um, it's a great story. Um, his isn't it? He's a he's a guy that's had a, a lot of setbacks, and um, he's just been so resilient with his footy, and to come off of, um, I think he's done three ACLs, three and, knees. Um, Yep, to be delisted by Brisbane and then go back and do it the hard way through the SNFL and come through to be a great story for him. But um, it's one that an opportunity that he's, that that he's thoroughly deserves. Um, the way he's trained and applied himself throughout the preseason has just been mm. um, exemplary. And um, he's, he's another one. He's a big man. He's aggressive. So um, I'd be pretty nervous if I was a Hawthorne forward and, and he was running at the footy. Oh, God, he's good at that drop-off mark, too. He can take a mark. That Sanford final series was outstanding. Hey, Robbie Gray, Dersma and Rosie, in a word, they all tracking to play against the Hawks? Yeah, we're hopeful that they'll all get up. Um, it's obviously a day-to-day -day thing um, with, with all of them, but um, they're all up and about and moving today, so uh, that's a positive sign, I guess. Yeah. Hawks game at home, the first one. It's a dedication game to the great Russell Ebert, who we sadly lost last year. Let's hope we get a big crowd, DBJ. Um, fire the hell up, and I hope you go well. Thanks for your time. Thanks, mate. Good to speak to you as always. He's a ripper, Darcy Byrne-Jones. That back six is superb. They've got a Lear Lear out. Mackenzie maybe comes up. No Tom Cleary, but you know what? One out, one in. Cyber security and workflow has never been more important than right now, so don't mess around. Get in touch with our mates, our cobbers, at One Solution, winner of the National Telstra Enterprise Custom Excellent Award. Bring us Darcy Byrne Jones. Some good news in the break there with Darcy. Uh, Sloney has won his appeal. Of course he has. Ban has been overturned, unsurprisingly downgraded from intentional to careless, so he'll be free to play on the weekend, downgraded to a $2,000 fine. Took an hour and a quarter. Didn't take Took long. an hour and a quarter of our time. The MRO, what a joke. It questioned his integrity. Now, if that was Green, Toby Green, God bless him, but he's got form in this area. Mm. Rory Sloan hasn't. Yep. Take the man's word. Leader in the game, and has had eye injuries. This, honestly. He knows all about eye injuries. He wouldn't go there. So, well done to the Crows. They've successfully appealed. Uh, Willie Rioli is next on the list. He's going to begin his appeal very shortly, banning for that, uh, appealing that high bump. And then Mitch Robinson from 7 o'clock tonight. So, still plenty happening happening in the tribunal. We'll stay abreast of it here on 5AA with our news. But now, Port Adelaide fans, time for you to call in again. We have another 5AA oh, oh, oh. locker room double to give away. Port Hawthorne this Saturday night. No other place you want to be but the 5AA locker room. Call now, 8223 Simple quiz question. Time for the traffic. Build now with Fairmont and save thousands in free luxury kitchen and bathroom upgrades. T's and C's apply. At Paraka, there's a smash on Montague Road at Mawson Lakes Boulevard. Blakeview Gasworks there, Main North Road near Smith Road, affecting both Direction speeds at 40. O'Halloran Hill, look out for works on Majors Road near the Southern Expressway. That's affecting both directions as well. And pretty slow going at the moment. Tapley's Hill Road, so Donald Rabbit Drive to West Beach Road. Keep your eye out for a camera too. Main North Road and Mawson Lakes. What's well, better than getting a mouth watering Krispy Kreme original glazed donut? Getting four of them for a limited time only. Get the $10 four pack for just $8 at OTR stores. Adelaide's most accurate traffic on 5AA. Have you tried pork Sancho Bao yet? It's so quick and easy. You just fry up some pork mince, break up a lettuce, and pork Sanchoy wow. For more dinner winners, just visit pork.com.au and get some pork on your fork. G'day, it's Mark Bickley. Schools, councils and businesses all over South Australia choose Leader Computers for very important reasons. Leader is local and exceptional value. No matter what happens, Leader can be on site to fix your problem. No overseas or interstate call centres to deal with. Plus, Leader Computers is a 100% owned and operated South Australian company offering fast same day delivery and setup. That's why so many organisations rely on Leader. Google Leader Computers to find your closest Leader reseller. G'day South Australia, the Cheats here. Over the years I've seen some great South Australian teams, but the best has to be the team from BL Shipway, who I've known for over 30 years. They've been looking after the state's hydraulic and pneumatic needs since 1953. You can find them on Richmond Road with stock on hand from quality brands like Ryko, Rexroth, Hydac and Enerpak. If you can't get to them, they'll send a Ryko 24-7 van to you anytime, anywhere. BLShipway.com.au, a South Australian team you can count on. 
Some concrete companies can be a little... But at Adelaide Exposed Concrete, we're changing all that. We're a team of highly skilled, highly professional tradespeople with a passion for delivering stunning exposed aggregate driveways, paths and entertaining areas. The best part for us isn't packing up, it's admiring the job we've done. Adelaide Exposed Concrete. Best on ground, all year round. If you're building a home, the Selector Homes Display Village is a great place to start. Your ideas and imagination will flow. There's nothing else quite like it in Adelaide. Different homes for different lifestyles, all in the one location. Walk through the sanctuary. It's simply stunning, with an incredible Jarrah facade, polished concrete floors and a sensational use of space. Explore the Selector Homes and Building Solutions Display Village, Port Wakefield Road, Burton. Visit selectorhomes.com.au. Scraped your caravan? Your insurance should cover that. Speak to Walker Crash Repairs and let them fix it. This is Rowie Sport Show. Ten minutes to six, Port Adelaide fans, it's your time. If you want to head along to Port Adelaide Hawthorne this Saturday night, we have a simple quiz question and we've got a oh, absolute full board here, Rowie. Well, it's the 5AA locker room. We're going to do it all week. So it's entry, it's premium seating. You get access to the bar, food and beverage. And the special part about this one, it's the Russell Ebert tribute it match, is. which is Hawthorne. Daniel from Powerlowie. Hello. Okay. You want to get this right, Daniel. No pressure, son. Okay. <laughs> First cab off the rank. How many times did Charlie Dixon bag four goals in a game last season? Two. Oh, sorry, Daniel. No, it's not two. Larry at Parafield Gardens. Larry, how many? He did five. Oh, Lazarus. Lazarus. Damien from Happy uh, Valley View. How many times did Charlie bag four? Oh, got any clues? Well, it's not <laughs> it's a two number. and it's not five. <laughs> not two and it's not five. Uh, was it three? Oh, uh, it's not two, not five and not three, Paul. What is it? It's under ten. Four. Oh, it's not two, it's not three, it's not five. <laughs> Paul at Westlakes, it's under seven. Six. Yes! <laughs> did I steer you then, Paul, from Westlakes? Yes. You had no clue, did you? <laughs> no. Round two no against clue. Eston. Round 13, Geelong. Round 16, <laughs> Hawthorne. Round 19, Collingwood. Round 20, GWS. Round 22, Cunt. What Jeez. that told me, his second half of the year was far better than his first. Paul, thanks to Port Adelaide, you're off to the game. You can book at portadelaidefc.com.au forward slash tickets. Doing it all week. How good is that? All right. Now, tomorrow night, stand.com.au forward slash event, 50 bucks, and you can watch Sonny Bill Williams take on Barry Hall. They are headlining the eight card Turf War pay-per-view event tomorrow night, 6 p.m. Stan subscribers, you can purchase that. New customers can sign up from Stan for free with a trial and purchase the Turf War now. Let's get ready to rumble! Sonny Bill Williams and Barry Hall weighed in today ahead of their Turf War tomorrow. It is live and exclusive on Stan event. Joining us now is big bustling Barry Hall. Bazza, welcome. Uh, thank you. Thanks for having me. You ready? I'm ready, mate. Yeah, it's been a been a long time coming. You know, I've had a really hard, solid ten weeks, and yeah, it's been it's been a long road, and uh, I just want to fight now. I just want to fight. Can't come soon enough. Two years in the making. There's been a lot of anticipation about it. How was the way in? It was a bit tense. Yeah, it was a bit tense, which is uh, how I like it. I want you to know he's he's in a fight, and it's been very respectful up till now. And you know, that's probably both our characters, but. I just want to let him know today that uh, this is real. He's in a fight and uh, he's going to get hurt. <laughs> Who spoke the most junk? Oh, there wasn't much trash talking. I, I just, Good. I spoke truths. You know, he's you know saying I'm jealous of him and all sorts of things, and you know, like I'm worried about his Instagram followers and stuff. You know, like I'm an influencer. <laughs> so trash talk doesn't mean too much. No, I agree. I'm with you, Bess. He also reckons he's younger, he's got more experience. And this one made me scratch my head a bit. He reckons he's hungrier than you, Baz. Yeah, yeah he reckons he's hungrier. Um, he's right about the, the youth and the experience. That's, you know, their fact. But, you know, I've also come a long way since my first fight, which I learned a hell of a lot about. And, uh, yeah, the, people are going to get surprised that, you know, the experience I've gained over the last two years, it's been invaluable for me. So, you know, hungrier. Who knows? We're going to find out. You know, when it gets tough, we'll, we'll see. Yeah, well, there must be some apprehension with SBW and, and, and certainly a lot of respect. I mean, he's travelled basically around the world. He's trained with Tyson Fury. Like, he's 
He knows he's in for a fight, I reckon, Baz. Well, he does, but uh, they, they opened their mouth and agreed upon things a long time ago. And now I think that, you know, it come to fruition that maybe they made a mistake because every fight they've ever had, something's been in their favour. And they mm. thought that this was the case as well with uh, with my age and experience and all those sorts of things and thought my performance was going to drop. But I think maybe they've heard about sparring and you know how I'm training and how I'm feeling and, and the improvements I've got. And he thought he better get training himself and, and <laughs> try and source out the best trainers in the world. So, you know, um, I actually find it as a weakness from their point of view. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've had everything I need right where I am. I put faith in my trainers. So it's an interesting dynamic. Mm. What's your plan, Bess? What's your plan for him? Well, obviously you've got to get him out of there. You know, there's a lot of uh, a lot of big corporations that want him to win because if he loses, there's a lot of money lost. I signed up knowing that, and we're just going to have to knock him out. I don't think the judges are going to give me a decision even if I win the fight. So, you know, that might sound paranoid to people, but we do know the Jeez. boxing game, and we do know money makes the world go round. So, um, wow. Yeah, I'm going to have to I'm going to have to knock him out. You're going to have to knock him out. That's that's a big accusation, isn't it? So they want it him is. to win. You're going in as the underdog. Yep, I'm going in as the underdog, and as I said, I, I, I'm fully aware of what I need to do. They're, they're not going to, unless I totally dominate him, um, they're not going to give me a decision. Um, too much money lost. He's the cash cow for him, and um, this whole promotion has been about him. You know, I'm just, they've used the term stepping stone and all those sorts of things Ooh. from my point of view. So it's, um, yeah, it's not personal, but it is. I'm not a stepping stone for anyone. Yeah, well said. Uh, he'd want to stay out of your way. One good collect could be curtains for him. <laughs> That is the plan, my friend. <laughs> oh, magnificent. Baz, it's been two years in the making, mate. All the best to, to you, your family um, and your team. I know you'll do them proud, and I can tell you, the entire AFL community is right behind you, including us here at AA. Mate, good luck. I don't think you'll need it. You'll make your own luck, Baz. We can't wait till tomorrow night. Thanks, mate. You've always been a big supporter. I always love having a chat, so thank you. No, good on you, Baz. Log on to stand.com.au forward slash event, and I'll be doing that with my son, Big Bezza. Come on, SBW. You'd have your lights closed out, buddy. <laughs> ka <-ching. laughs> Time for last shout. The last shout. Well, just on that from Big Bez, oh. his quotes, um, he all but said boxing's corrupt. Big corporations want him to win. Mm. Judges won't give him a decision. These are his quotes. Um, we all know the boxing game. Well, we do. Mm. He needs to knock him the clean out. Good just on him. that, Baz has had one fight over the last two years. One. SBW was a former New Zealand heavyweight champ. We know how big <laughs> some of those Maoris are over in New Zealand. Baz is 45. SBW is 36. Not that age is everything. Good luck. I'm a little bit fearful. Yeah. And I'm hopeful <laughs> that Baz can get the job done. He's an absolute ripper. We love chatting with him. Hey, Red's assistant, Ross Aloisi, has landed an overseas role with an Asian powerhouse team. He'll leave after the Melbourne Victory game, 2nd of April. That is a big loss, a big shoes to fill. Yeah. Ross, you star. Congratulations. We'll get him on the show Good. hopefully Thursday, I reckon, before Good. their game this weekend. Uh, great to see him moving on to some Roscoe. very big good jobs. Fantastic, Roscoe. All right, it's two and a half minutes to six. Time for the new Sports Day SA next. With destinations like the Barossa Valley, your best adventures are right here in 